<laughs> nigga tired of wearing shorts, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, he ain't here today, man. I know we live on Facebook. I see us live on uh, YouTube. Just waiting for the picture to pop up. Y'all pile in. Make sure y'all smash the like button, man. Straight up and down. We need to be at 1,500 likes. Pronto. In, in like 15 minutes. We here. Hey, man, I appreciate that, man. One of my good partners in life, man. He said, man, I got a, I got a partner that you a fan of, man. I may be able to get him on the show, man, and make, you know, make that happen for you. You know what I'm saying? And, and when he told me who it was, I was like, man, if you could make that happen, man, that's like an early Christmas gift, man, because he one of them dudes that get it, man. You know what I mean? I want everybody to, to give an esteemed welcome to, you know, one of the dopest MCs, period, and also a very intellectual, highbrow thinker, man. Give it up for Glasses Malone, man. Yes, sir. Man, I appreciate you coming, man. Yeah. Much respect, man. So for those who may not know, because they watch this shit all over the world, man, uh, t tell them who you are and where you from. Man, Glasses, man. Big Glasses low. Glasses Malone. Watch side, man. Watch east side. All that, man. Everything <laughs> on the other side of the one ten. Right, right. That's Yo. what I'm Easty. Yeah. 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 Everything man, over there. man. <laughs> Everything so, you've done some things in your career that any nigga that spit that's from the West Coast, that's in my, our age bracket, has to respect. You always been one of those pillars, man, because I feel like you was the first. You was born in the eighties or the seventies. Eighty. Eighty. Okay, right. <laughs> I feel like in my generation. I like to say I'm a seventies. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, right, right, right. So, so I like to say you the first. MC, because I consider you more than a rapper, you know what I'm saying? You're the first MC in my generation that came from the type of shit that I came from, besides the game, mm -hmm. and and got a major deal. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that journey, man, from just, you know, from being in Watts, you know what I'm saying, banging or whatever you was doing, whatever you was into before you took music serious. Like, what started your journey into hip-hop? Well, technically, I was selling PCP at the time. Right. Sherm said, um... Popular at it already on Crenshaw, gang banging, doing the usual. Um, my brother, my little brother, K Style, came home from jail. He was in YA at the time. And my mom wanted me to do stuff to keep him out of trouble. And he came to me, he wanted to rap. So I was like, okay, he wanted to start a group. So me, him, and my older brother started a group together. I hadn't really rapped before that. And um, What year are we talking? This, this is before 2003. Okay, this is after we found out Theo wasn't black on the beach. Yeah, okay. yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Right, right. I right. did not know that. Nigga, I found out at Summer Jam 98. I found out today thinking about it again. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Um, yeah, nah, so, feel me, he wanted to start a rap group, so me, him, and my older brother started a rap group. We started writing songs, and um, we did about four or five songs. My older brother quit. He became a manager. Right. Pool, right? And K went back to jail again. Right, right. So I liked it. It became therapeutic. So I started writing to kind of, you know, to keep my, my articulate side and then uh, express like it became therapy. Like right. All the shit we was going through at the time, losing all the homies, going to jail, just getting in trouble. And uh, meeting Dr. Dre, long story short, impressing him with some music, he thought I should be doing it for a living. And I just kind of switched at that point and became doing this for a living. Oh, wow. Okay, so a few things I want to know about, man. So you you, you, you know how to cook? You used to cook the PCP? Like, you know how to, yeah. Okay, so you was a chef, man. You know you can still make some money, nigga. Right now. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> right now. <laughs> I was just telling so, so I brought my boy Deuce with me, right? right so right. Deuce from the Giants, man. And I always joke with him, like, <laughs> shit, we go out to Philly just... Get some parts together, do a show. Yeah, yeah. Be up, feel me, a whole thing or two or something. Right oh now, so. man, man, the murder rate will go up like a motherfucker, you know. <laughs> man, all of us a good cook man. around. And man. we gonna set the yards. We ain't yeah, gonna use them readies yeah. and all that when, trash. Man, we gonna really, man, we gonna really do it. When you start hearing about dome shots in front of the police station, <laughs> I mean the PCP is real high quality, <laughs> man. <laughs> that make a nigga lose all motherfuckers. <laughs> uh, take the brakes off a nigga fast. Yeah, for you impressionable niggas. We only talk that dirty when a nigga really clean, man. So right, <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah I wouldn't be, we wouldn't be on here doing it. Right, I'm going to blame it on the G record. <laughs> okay, so so K-Styles and Pooh. Okay, so K-Style goes back to jail, yeah. and you keep recording. 
Now I'm starting to record. Now me and my boys, we get a whole set up, so I'm recording at the house. I'm just sharpening my skills. Um, getting better and better every day. I go to Kiki Lope, so niggas, niggas off the street, True Blue. Right, I'm right. I'm showing him, and he like, you rapping? He was laughing because he just knew this little kind of little kid, like this little young boy that was a drug dealer. He like, right. he rapping. Right. Like, I'm telling you, I'm going to start a label and blah, blah, blah. And he was like, nigga, you is crazy. So I just kept on doing it. And he, you know, I started going around him more and more to learn more stuff. That's how I met Blaze. Right. Blaze was like this super sharp and rap at this time, like super duper cold. And um, I couldn't even get on the mic at that time. Right, right. <laughs> like, that was like no play because it was Blaze. Feel me? It was, it was somebody else hard, too. And Kiki... So I just kept on paying dues, paying dues, and finally Kiki put me on one song, and that became a song that impressed my, my engineer, my future engineer. And um, he started recording me, hence how I got to Dre. Right. And that song impressing Dre. Right, right, okay. Um, what was the first song you made where you knew you had it? Like, nigga, I, I mean, you know, all this time I know I could rap, but I, I feel like I might, be a, I might be special like this. So when I was ignorant and just didn't know no better, right, I thought right. I had something? Shh. I thought all my shit was hard. I ain't gonna even lie to you. I, I thought it was good songs. Right, right. I didn't really realize I was weak probably till like 2011. Right. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Like, I was like, <laughs> nigga, a million dollars in. Like, I'm weak as a motherfucker. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Oh, God, because in the Breakfast Club 2016, I'm telling him, I'm like, there's no way I deserve to make no $2 million, $3 million in this time. And don't be like, don't know shit and don't really be that good. Right, right. I really felt that way. So I didn't really realize I was um, not tight until then. Right, and right. And then I was like, okay, you got, like, I didn't think I was the best or nothing. I just thought I was good at what I did. I didn't realize it was so much room to grow. Right, right. So then I started realizing around 2011, it was some room to grow. So I could rap. You right. And I was dope. Like, I wasn't, like, you could hear what I was doing and it was good, and everybody knew it was from an authentic place. Right. So, niggas really was supporting it. Right. I think, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, an intelligent mind can com compartmentalize things. Yeah. So, when Glasses says he realized, you know, he wasn't good, he wasn't referring to his total ability as a rapper. He just may be referring, referring to certain elements of, of the craft of MCing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's a part of humility. You always got to realize when you, when it's growth that's needed, you know what I'm saying? Man, and and more than anything, I, I was saying on the Breakfast Club, you can't be in the record business and don't know about records. Mine is MCing. Right. You know I mean, I'm signed to a label that's, you know, one of the greatest labels. I'm with Birdman them every day, and I can't make a record. Right. You know, don't even know I need to. Just can't figure out why the songs aren't performing. Just, right. Well, like certified perform so well, but these songs aren't. And um, you know, you with somebody and they trying to figure it out, but it's up to you. It's your career. Right. So, so what, they, they gave me the greatest platform in the world, and I just couldn't figure it out at that time. What came first, the Sony deal or Birdman? They within, they're a year apart. Okay. So Sony Urban went out of business. Okay. They shut down that whole department, and I took those records. Uh, somebody looked out for me at Sony at that time, and I took those records free and clear to cash money. Cert I already had certified. Right. Okay. Okay. All right, so let's talk about it. So, so in that type of situation, when a when a, a label is absolved, do you own your intellectual property, Hell or you gotta no. so you gotta buy it from them? Or no, it depends. Like they could charge you for it. They could sit you on the bench because you got absorbed with the deal. Um, KP Kawan Pranther really looked out for me. I mean, Pranther he 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 got me out of my situation free and clear with my records. Right, like, gave me a solid. Right, right, so, right. Nah, it could have been fucked up. I could have been there for seven years, stuck. Right, the length of the contract. I think it was three or four years um they could have charged me for the records they could have kept them they didn't they didn't do none of that they were scared <laughs> they, they, nah, know, nah. they know who wear glasses nigga. Nah, nah, cause, cause they was way in new york it wasn't right, even okay. no you know what i mean it wasn't nothing really no god like, when them jews start turning money down man there's some yeah, real gangster nah, shit nah, going nah, on over there nigga. Nah. you couldn't even get nobody on the phone <laughs> yeah okay okay my right. attorney couldn't really he reaching out to people they like we don't know what's going on so i, I linked up with kp through greg street Okay, Street gotcha. in Atlanta, and that's how I got with KP, and I went and seen him, and I explained to him. He was like, man, what you going to do? And I'm like, I don't know, but I don't want to sit here. He was like, don't worry, I got you. Right, and right. From that point on, I mean, I had another opportunity. So let's talk about all facets of signing to a major label before we get to the whole, whole Birdman situation. Sure. So what did you think it was going to be like being with a major label, um, and what was the actual reality? Like, what kind of caught you off guard where you, you, know, where you, you didn't see it coming? I had no intentions on signing to no major label, honestly. 
Blast them to tell you, like, I was I was running a PCP spot. I was raised to run a, a spot. Right. So I was trying to open a business. I never intended to be a rapper as long. Right. I was like, okay, I'm going to use myself to get this label going. Then I'm going to sign some talent. Right. And then I'm going to put them out like, this the spot again. Okay, I got another spot. Right, right. Now I'm put the rappers in. So I knew how to do that. Right, right. Um. When right. I got when I got super hot, feel me, I'm with game in them at the time. I'm with Black Wall Street initially. And um I'm realizing I'm gonna have to do it on my own, more or less, you know, as far as going into the professional ranks. Right, right. Um I had met up with Free Ray Rick at this time and the homie Monty from John Street, this legendary nigga from Watts. They used to race cars, had all this dope money at the time. I was they was trying to give me six or seven hundred thousand to start my own label. But my older brother, you know, when Sony came to us and started offering all that money and these one point seven million dollar deals and seven, eight hundred thousand dollar advances and big budgets and promotional shits, he was like, Oh, if we do this, we don't gotta pay the money back. Right. But then that required becoming an artist for real and not being just some nigga that was like a a real hustler that ran a, a business. Right, right, right. So I didn't have no ideas because I never intended to go sign a deal, a record contract. Right, 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 right. So I feel like your energy was good, man. I think that's probably what it is because, you know, I've met you on a few occasions. You, you you probably wouldn't remember, but that's one thing I told the niggas where I'm from is like, man, that nigga got good energy, man. He he got a lot of star quality. Yeah, yeah. You know, like if, 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 if the right bag or the right situation presents itself i feel like i would tell them you, you got the you know that them jay-z type of you yeah, know what i mean yeah, like yeah, you know what i'm saying that. so yeah you know, it's really for me opening my mouth i mean we don't right. really wear no jewelry and all the extra shit right so everything up top that's when it really start being something so let me tell you your favorite collab shit initially of all time i like working with ty dollar sign um Working with him is always a growing experience. That nigga's so fucking cold, cause that nigga is like incredible. Yeah. Like he could play the bass. I started playing the bass, you know, different things. He's one of those guys that surprise me every time. Like he'll, if I send him an idea just to listen to, like the artist in him makes him have to reorganize it to where it's right or just tell me it's right. Right. Like I, I was working on this idea for this song called What Would Nip Do? And I just send it to him just to hear it. Right. I'm like, man, I need a gospel singer for this. He was like, nah, nigga, you need Tyrone Griffin. Right. Feel me like right. this. You sound like a hell of a name. baseball player in the city. <laughs> <laughs> so this is government name. <laughs> so it's it's the, the nigga with a cold <laughs> cleat collection. That nigga, every cleat ever came out. And that's all. <laughs> this oh, tie. Man. So this oh, tie. <laughs> this this nigga talking about himself in third person. Right, right. Like so he just reorganized the kicks and made it modern and added some shit. Like that's just who he is as right. an artist. Right, He's right. He's just a brilliant dude. So that's probably my favorite. Well, I'm a chess player, man, and I feel like in hip hop, there are certain songs that are real good chess moves. Mm -hmm. And that Tupac song you did, mm -hmm. I feel was a great chess move, man. It made it made it'll make you think on a, a, a multiplicity of levels. Let's let's talk about the you know the, the inspiration for the song your intention for doing it uh, and the outcome like what you know how how'd you go about coming up with that song and the whole concept um shit that whole journey starting to learn records starting to learn about the culture of hip-hop starting to learn about marketing and getting to a place where i had a rudimentary understanding of it so that was the thing and it was like okay i needed to i realized the suits got in the business the jews and all these people got in the hip-hop business because it would it would sell itself like the culture was so revealing you know what i'm saying like it would sell itself so one of the most important parts i had to realize was how people saw me as a brand you know what i'm saying and and i realized that they saw me one way it didn't matter how, to me i see myself i talked to blade we could talk cars for four or five fucking hours right because i'm a car nigga i'm a a lot of things. I'm a mathematician in my mind. I'm a thousand things. But to, to the rest of the world who just drive by my business, that's a crib. Right. So what is your brand to you? What, what do you want people? So I, I like to believe marketing is what people know about you. Blaze could tell you my marketing. He could tell you glasses in the cars. Glasses from 7th Street. Glasses is smart. Glasses is a West Coast nigga. He could tell you my mom, man. Glasses, mom went to prison. He know the marketing. He know what's the inside of what, what make me who I am. Right. The brand, like the stranger, the absolute stranger is something he would know that don't know me. And the first thing everybody going to know is that nigga's a crip. Right. And that was important because it told me exactly what I needed to make for the fans who didn't know me. Right, right. So I had to make something that was within the culture itself 
but I still had to give away like I had to I had to give away culture. I had to give some like revealing culture, something they could never have access to. Right, right. And um I kept listening to fuck the police a thousand times. Cute. I was like, yeah, because right. I had to make something like this. Right, right. I had to make fuck the police and, and I kept saying, What would it sound like in two thousand twenty? Like how would that sound? Right. And um kept thinking about it, kept thinking about it. And I started thinking like, damn, well, it would have to be something that involved the crib. Feel me that the world knew about, but they didn't know it involved the crib. Right, right. Not a lot of crib stories that the world know. Period. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. But if I could take a story that the world knew that involved the crib, and then give the perspective of the gang member, feel me that perspective, then I could pull it off. So I had that idea based off like a TV show I was writing called Two Sides. Right. I was writing like about Hitler, Satan. Um, Baby Lane at that time, all these people who society views as like pariahs and right. these horrible people, but they got a story too right. that they feel is justified. So I was writing it like that. So it was either Tupac Must Die as a rap song, like that song, the two sides of Tupac Must Die, or I was writing another song about like uh, the riots, right. the LA riots and how they felt at that time and what made Kiki and all them go crazy. Right. So I, I, I chose that side. And then I just started knocking out the record. Right. But it really became just me trying to add something to hip hop. Like give people preview and something they never could get. Right, right. Into. No, it was fire, man. And, 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 you know, even with the whole Tupac scenario, I find it very interesting how a motherfucker could be embraced by a culture, like fully, like Pac was, a West Coast gang culture, but not have no understanding of it. But that's that's you what's funny though, cause that's so you said that. Yeah. That's actually ninety percent of the people in games. Right, 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 right. Like I, what I, I was telling the homie the other day, <laughs> feel me? Like I'm one of the few niggas I know from where I'm from that flew the plane manually. Right. The average nigga is punched in the cold destination. It's autopilot. autopilot. Right, right. So right. another nigga telling them everything to do. They don't know why they doing it. They never question their homies. They never ask no questions. They just doing what another nigga tell them. Right. So they don't have an articulate way to understand why. They never even try. A lot of niggas, even if they ain't being told, they smoke and shine just to go do the shit. Right, right, right. Yeah. Feel me? They high, drunk, trying to maneuver through it. Right, right. Everything. I don't drink and smoke, so everything I had to do, I had to know why. Right. I had to live with it. Right. Great so facts. it's one of them things where I was able to fly manually. Right. That's some deep shit, man. Yeah. 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 I mean, making a conscious decision makes you a lot more dangerous. Right. Yeah. Funny is, <laughs> you know I didn't think about that until my homeboy came off from of jail. And I was yeah. like, man, he used to, when Lil J came home, I was like, man, that's crazy. You smoked Charmy did to go shoot that nigga. He's like, it's crazy. You actually didn't. Right. <laughs> what about that? Like, man. Man, man. Hey, for y'all that's just tuning in. So as far as that, glasses. that's what kind of. Projecting me into doing a motherfucker. Well, what, what a lot of people don't understand that didn't grow up in L.A. County around gang culture um, is how how much of an alien. Wait till the homie uh, finishes meeting. All right, wait. <laughs> <laughs> how much of an alien a person like Tupac would be to a real gang member? Sure. It's almost. It, it would almost be like when white people first landed. Uh, on a, you know, what I'm saying on a, on a beach of a place where they hadn't seen white people what before. Is he, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because because gang culture is prison culture. What well, elements of it? The, <laughs> the predatory aspects yeah, yeah. of it to it. You, you know, push the <laughs> right to the prison. Huh? I mean, I'm, but I mean that's what run the streets. You, yeah, you feel what I'm yeah. saying? And so it's it's you know I have uh, Zoe. Zoe has this saying he got from Christian Amerte that says there is no healthy way to integrate into a sick society. And it was just interesting to see, well, in hindsight, see Pac, you know, trying to introduce these concepts, you know what I'm saying, of, of, of unity and a lot of Black Panther principles into a situation that's already morally corrupt and sick. You know what I'm saying? How do you, how do you feel or do you even feel like gang culture mishandled Pac? Do you feel like we shorted Pac or do you feel like it's Pac's fault what happened to him? Shit, that's just how it go. I don't really have. I don't. I think the when we talk about morally, like you know, culture, like for right. real, like when we talk about culture, a huge part of culture is morality. Right. I'm explaining the morality of how we live. It's rooted in poverty. Reputation is everything, so we guard it with our lives. You know what I mean, it's right. what we have, so right. we would give our lives for reputation because we don't have nothing else. It's like uh, it's like New Jack City when a nigga say uh. We all we got. 
Like at first, the concept of them niggas hurt each other could never be nothing because we all we got. Right, right, right. But as soon as Nino got some money, some bitches, he got the Carter, he got all this shit cracking, the first nigga that was expendable was G-Money. They knocked him right down. Right, knocked him down. So when people ask me, do I think it's Pac fault? I don't think it's nobody fault. I think our culture is so contagious that the love of it is, is so undersold that people don't realize why you would be involved. Right. From the outside looking in, it's just this violent thing of people just getting killed. That's not true. Right. Gang culture ain't about beefing with nobody. It's about loving your homeboys. Right. People you grew up with and y'all being in a poor situation yet making the best out of y'all lives. Right, so right. So I think he's seen that, that love and wanted to be a part, rightfully so. Right. And they embraced him. Right. But then he also didn't understand the morality of it as well. Right. Or decided that it was worth it like all my homies did. Right. So I don't think it's no fault. I think Pac lived a full life. I think Pac made all the changes he felt like he wanted to. Right. And I think he lived every day like he didn't have to live tomorrow. Yeah, so I can. So I it's can. just how it would go. You know, the, the point you made about underselling the whole love aspect that's involved with gang culture is something that you would have to be within it to understand. You feel what I'm saying? Because it looked like chaos from the outside. But, who, but, but think about it. Which culture is not like that? We looking at what's going on right now in Mexico with the mafia and all that. They gunning. We have no idea what's really driving that. Right. We looking at the clan like they just want to knock us off. We have no idea what's truly driving that. Right, right. We just think, I mean, it's very few cultures that hate drives. Right, Hate right. don't bring people together. Like, I mean, it, it could, I mean, obviously the families and their trades came together off hate, but mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a real thing to keep a true bond. Right. I think so for Pac when he seen how they loved each other, he wanted a part of that and rightfully so. Right. That's what happened to Chris Brown and all of them. They see that respect that other people have for the men and the love they have for each other, and who wouldn't want to be a part? Definitely. I mean, I would agree. I mean, for people of such high stature, uh, to want to be around something real and poor. Right. Around that's the cats. <laughs> exactly. Think so. about that. So when you look at the basketball players or the rappers that's trying to be down. Think about how much love and how much something they got to be for them to want to be stuck around poor people. Most definitely. Because most rich people do not want to be around poor people. What is some un unexpected backlash you, you may have received uh, from dropping a song? <sighs> really, nothing too unexpected. I felt there was some people in the streets that I felt shouldn't have said nothing because they ain't said nothing to none of these crackers that made these raggedy-ass movies right. that mm. said something to me. Right, right. That's what I didn't like. Mm. Right. right. Straight up. Okay, the fans, I mean, feel me? The fans, I get it. They don't know right. no better. Right. The outlaw's job and legacy is to... The outlaw's job and responsibility is to protect his legacy. Right. So even if it's, they know it, it make more sense, the fans see it as a threat, so they got to stand up against the threat. My issue is when certain people from the street say something to me about it. Right. That's my problem. Like, if you from the street, if you from the culture, then shut the fuck up. Straight up. <laughs> you know how this shit, like, don't try to act like this just one, like, this happened to all our homeboys. Man. So, uh, I, I think that was the one thing. But then I should have thought about it when when I was talking to Dre and them, because Dre was cussing me out about the song, Dr. Right. Dre, and... We was talking about fuck the police, and he was telling me how much backlash they was getting from right next door. Right, right. Like, right at home, the church and family members and everybody else. So, that's something I definitely miscalculated. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's Yeah. I mean, the song was definitely one of those ones, man. And uh, if you haven't heard it, you definitely need to go listen to it, because it's, a, it's, a, it's definitely a dope piece of art you know what i'm saying two, even two the video the video, uh, video is cold, video is cold. Video. glasses malone got an nft that one man i know you got yeah. some some background footage or something we ain't seen on that i don't even i don't even really man to me like i just wanted to you just want if you want hip-hop like i said the, the first no, ahead, keep oh, the first few years i mean you just want to you just in it you think you have no idea what it's about but the more you get into the hip hop and what it really represents, right. you want to start adding something to the culture. Right. So I felt like Tupac Must Die was my first add to the culture. Really? One hundred percent. I think before that, I added to West Coast culture. I added to, I had that good that added to the West Coast. I brought inspiration, but it's another thing to put a brick in the foundation that hip hop is building. Right. That's one of the ones. Right. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, I I agree with that wholeheartedly. Um. So let's talk about Birdman. Because I, I mean, you, you've messed with a lot of the greats in this game, from Dre to Birdman to, 
uh, Mac-10, sure. and a host of other people. You know what I mean? So Birdman happened before uh, Mac-10, right? Uh, yeah, but they close to the same. Okay. One okay. was like four months, and he took me to a stone. So did you have options, and you chose to go with Cash Money? Yeah. Okay. What made you go with Cash Money? What surprised you about Birdman? Talk about that whole situation in its, in its entirety. What's funny is, that's funny, Deuce. <laughs> Deuce is in the video for Tupac Must Die. Oh, okay. Yep. You should really ask him what it was like for him. Because <laughs> I couldn't imagine what it's like for him, because when I asked him to do it, he was like, fuck it, let's do it. But I, I don't think he actually knew what was going to happen. Right, right. When people was running up on you on the street. Nah, niggas called my phone. Like, the mic is up here. Yeah, let it be. Mic, you know what I mean? Niggas, like, niggas are asking niggas like, you know, like, oh, you know, stupid shit. Like, oh, man, nigga, you killed Tupac or something like that. <laughs> right, right. But it wasn't really like, I mean, I just didn't give a fuck. Like, nigga, shit, it's real life. You know what I mean? Like, everybody like, niggas fuck, fuck, like fuck, LA nigga. Fuck. Man. That's LA nigga. Straight up. I don't yeah, give a fuck. Yeah, you know, we all knew, even though we was kids, that... But Every last nigga in LA knew what he was going. He was going same to, spot. Yeah, yeah you yeah. feel me? We all knew, but yeah. you know, again, that situation. But back to stunning them. But I, I, I never asked Deuce, like, hey man, like, how was it for you? Because niggas really thought, like, in real life, like I killed Tupac, or they thought the title meant something about me. And I'm like, right. nah, bro, it's like a, yeah, some, it's a hip hop like song. Was telling the story of what we really went out and did. It was like some real crazy shit. Like right. they was like, yeah, now y'all got the footage, y'all got the evidence. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. Bring it to me when this nigga got it. Was That's wild. Y'all use shit. some real car and shit? No, nah, no. Nah, we bought, so I bought a car and I painted the car so it looked brand new. Right, right. right. Dash chain. Yeah. We didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, yeah. We oh, went and shot. Actually, the, we yeah. went and shot all true locations. Right. Everything true location. Inside the casino, at the actual location, everything. Damn, that's fire, man. We shot. We went to yeah. Vegas and did the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as stunning man. What was it like? Fuck. What, what made me choose Cash Money? Because there's a lot. It's a lot of. It's a, on the outside looking in. A lot of people. You hear negative. You hear positive things about Stunner. Yeah. You hear he don't pay his artists. Then some artists say he do pay. I mean, you just hear a lot of things, man. So, you know. Give give us give us an insight on Stunner and how he runs his business and if he's fair with artists, you know. Um. So Stunner, what the reason I fuck with Stunner is, he was just a solid nigga. He was cool. Just talk to a nigga like he had some sense. I mean, Cash Money is such a rich legacy in hip hop, and he was just super interested. He was invested in the nigga like hard. Right. He wanted to do business with me, and I was like, "Shit, all right, let's do it." Um, what was it like fucking with him? It was like probably one of the most educational experiences I had in my life. Okay. Let's get um, to he that. taught me a lot. Um, I can see why they're so successful outside of just natural talent. Their ethic is unmatched. Can't nobody work as hard as them. You know, uh, Pac got a ton of songs. That's how Wayne is. They never stop working. They work every day, every day, every day, every day. Hmm. Um, is he fair with his business? He was more than fair to me. Um, to everybody else, I think he's fair. But I think what happens is uh, it's always a miscount because everybody is marketing finances and wealth and success. Everybody always think he got way more than what he got. That's my opinion. Right. People really think this man got billions of dollars or Jay-Z got billions of dollars. And it's like, that's just the furthest time from the truth. Like right. Somebody value don't have nothing to do with what they got. Right, right. Long right. Fuck, they can mortgage everything in their life and they don't got this shit. Right, yeah. Right. So, that's, that's real talk. Yeah, definitely. Ain't too many people liquid for a billion, man. Yeah. 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 So I think, um, yeah. is he fair with his business? Yeah, for the most part. I mean, I don't, he never did nothing wrong to me. And I've never seen him do something wrong to nobody else. But I just think the average person has no real understanding of how the business works right. around right. him. So, you know, they always feel like they owed something. But if he actually start really running the bill on what people spend, it'll be different. Right, right. But, I mean, at the same time, they still, like, live like some real niggas. So right, right. it's entirely too much cash in the situation. I mean, these niggas riding around with million dollars, two million dollars. Oh, like, man. That yeah. probably ain't lit. Man, yeah, that's nah, nah, nah. I hate to even think about shit yeah, like that, man. To bring to bring the worst out of me, yeah. man. Well, this nigga, this nigga got a, you said this nigga got a million dollars. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, God. oh, God and his son. Would you recommend an artist with a buzz to sign to a major these days, or do you think that's an ex extinct pathway? 
I think it depends on the type of artist. If right. you want to make it records, uh, yeah. Like if you a record maker, right? Yes, but if you like a, um, if you more into the art of it all, like a Joyner Lucas, I wouldn't do that. Right. But if I'm Rimble, I wouldn't do that. If I'm um, Draco, I wouldn't do that. Um, but if I'm Blast, I would do that. Okay, so explain the difference between a person making a record or records like Blast and somebody that's doing, you know, some trap rap or some, you know, just explain the difference because somebody might be lost. So a record is, is like kind of this thing that uh, becomes unbelievably clutchy. As soon as you hear it, you kind it's contagious. You know the idea. The first time you damn near know the idea itself. Right. You making something with the intentions of it to be catchy. Right. You know what I'm saying? You make it something that's, that carries a certain energy. It's kind of tough to put it in words. You just know it when you know it if you're in the business. Right, right. Um, versus somebody else who's carrying energy in the movement of just people. Right. Like certain people is just a movement of the people. Right. And the people going to carry you the whole time. But you go to a record label, sad news going to beat you home. So like Pharrell's Happy is a record. Pharrell's Happy is a record, but Pharrell's... Uh, by back by popular demand, right? With Cameron and Eclipse is a record, right? Okay, so uh, in comparison to let's say Brother Lynch, uh, well, give me a Brother Lynch song. I dude. got that nigga for my four songs. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But, but well, Lynch was a different breed too. But um, let me think. Uh, Cause it could be as grimy as Wu Tang Cream, right? Right. So it could be as pop as happy and grimy as Wu Tang Cream. But some songs, like the style of the rapper itself, if you just using energy and shit to carry it, right? You know what I'm saying? It ain't it. The one, give me a record verse uh, song reference, and you know, kind of tying into what he says. Your favorite record, as opposed to just like a you know, a re you know, a grimy, at, well, not a grimy song, but something that is not so popular, I guess. Oh man, I think the best music be the shit that's on the B side. Honestly, if you listen to a great artist, right? So I don't know, like on uh for me, let's say on a uh, on death certificate, probably like my favorite track is probably True to the Game. Okay. That wasn't no yeah, big, yeah. you know what I mean? And he he told you he said what's going. Q predicted today, back in '91 on that song True to the Game, you know. But death certificate as an album, like just a totally separate piece, but. Both of them are great, but something like that. But today, but but uh, today was a good day. Would be a record. That's a joint. Yeah. That's yeah. A, okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> As an artist, when you go in, do you have that concept in your mind? Like I'm about to make a a popular record that everybody would fuck with, or do you just go in and grind, and then whatever happens, happens? So I used to do that at first. Um, I used to just walk in, and whatever happened, happened. The vibe. I was just making fun of Deuce and them earlier, like niggas talking about what they feeling. And I'm like, bro, that's like unprofessional. <laughs> like, nigga, we professionals. Nigga, you can't walk in this motherfucker talk about, well, I ain't feeling this shit. Right. Feel. Feel me? That's like I feel about mental health and niggas talking about athletes, talking about they, man, shut the fuck up right. and play. Right, right. <laughs> Everybody have bad days. Right, right. That's the point of your great days is to have bad days. But I'm having a bad day. I'm checking out my mental health. Shut the, man, play the fucking sport. Right. Feel me? That's the point. So. I think now when I go in, it's such a different process, man. I might just go into the studio and listen to vinyls for all day. I might not record two things. Right. Feel me? I might just play vinyls. I'm just searching for a break or getting a feel of the records or what I'm making. But once I find a break, that's when it starts. Right. So you're not rushing the process at all. Not even halfway. Yeah, man. Once, once I decide on the break, execute, execute, execute. But finding the break is really where the journey is now. Right, right. Finding that perfect break that loop and you know what I mean then building around that loop breaking it up and now I start rapping is easy for right, me right 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 that's your process too Blaze no but it, Blaze only writes songs after you beat a bitch up <laughs> <laughs> he knock his bitch out go straight to the studio <laughs> Imagine, babe, I, I, will, I won't beat him up, man. I, I'll probably punch her in the chest, though. <laughs> I'm just bullshit. Well, what's your process, Blaze? A lot of y'all don't know, man. Blaze is fire on that as mic. Fuck. Fire. Blaze is working um, on some new entrance music as we speak. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he said Blaze in the WCW. That's I seen that he was calling Bray Hart. Friends, shit. I, I appreciate that. That's my manager, Todd, there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the 
mad manager. <laughs> so what's your process, Blaze? How do you how, how do you get the best possible scenario out of a song when you decide to do one? Uh, I, you know, you gotta if, if if that's what I'm going for, you know, I'm, I'm just gonna. Uh, <laughs> like, nigga, I just get in there and rap. He's like, I just get in there and nigga and rap, nigga. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, and, yeah that's kind of real shit, too. But, but, but that's why, you know what I'm saying? That's why I'm glad to have brothers like, you know, like Glass. Yeah. I'm for sure, man. man for, and like, I'm just like D, man. Cause they, they, what's they your draw, process? Yeah, yeah, man, they draw it up. What's your process? He like, I got to feel the beat. Yeah. I got to feel the beat. Yeah. Them yeah. niggas run through 100 beats. Uh, the, Hey, bro, yeah. being in the studio yeah. with a young rapper is the greatest shit in the world to me. Because they just be going through a thousand beats. Man. They be like, man, well, this one, nah, this ain't it. This, bro, what are you doing? Right, 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 right. So I couldn't imagine. What's funny is I used to do this shit too, yeah. but I couldn't imagine not doing it how I do it no more. Like, I got to let them vinyls be. Yeah. That, that, that match with, with, with your mind at the time. You know what I mean? You gotta come closer to the microphone. That's yeah. the point. Like sometimes I try to be my brother, like we, like we, like whatever mood I'm in, so I might argue with a bitch or something. And I'm like, damn, I gotta like. That's a lot of his songs. Out, so I just let the music play, whatever the song say. Whatever, whatever, whatever song say, yeah, argue with a bitch. About, right. Yeah, then I'm gonna run there with you that. There you go. Or, <laughs> so I don't feel me. I'm in there with the homies. We chilling. You feel me? Whatever. Music, Find a chill beat. Yeah. Soundtrack. Of what's the fuck going on, and then I just run with that, or then you fuck with this nigga, and it's like, nah, we, hey, this beat about this, and you be like, damn, I don't even hear that. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, you just say, fuck it and do the shit. You know what I mean? Right. And I think that's when he say, like, the professional part of shit. You know what I mean? Like, nigga, this beat gonna be about this, and you be like, nigga, I don't hear that. But you, when you do it, it just come out cool. You want to say something? Yeah, I did. Go ahead. Like, uh, yeah, uh, I want to know, bro, because I know you uh, a while from a while ago from Tommy Gun Studio, bro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is your process of recording the same way yeah, as cool. you was doing it back then? Like without writing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nah, that shit, um, not writing came from fucking with Wayne. Right. Wayne made fun of me in the studio for like 20 minutes. Is that right? Yeah, like. <laughs> It's fucking Lil Wayne, dog, and he like talking about how I rap. Like, man, why are you still writing your raps down, bro? Like, you don't even smoke weed or drink. Like, you can't remember your raps. And I'm like, nigga, you supposed to write the rap down. He's like, why? And he just kept on talking and just kept challenging me. And eventually it just was like, all right, well, I ain't going to write shit down. Damn. He said, I ain't wrote a rap down since 2008. What was he saying? He was just saying that it would help me better. Like, he was like, man, when you be writing, it sound like you rapping the essay sometimes versus just rapping to the beat. He said, if you focus on the music, you know what I mean, you'll write within the music versus right. trying to lay some poetry down over the track. Right. But he just had, like, jokes. He was, like, joking. Like, this nigga can't remember shit. Right, right, this right. This nigga don't drink or smoke. So <laughs> mm. that shit that day, and I just stayed right there, and I just was like, all right, so I ain't never writing nothing else down again. Yeah, I feel like that turned it more into jazz, man, because... Them old jazz artists, them niggas, bro, they used to play around with them rhythms, the vocalists, man. Right, they right. they was never just in the box, you know what I'm saying? There was always some trickery going on beneath the Wayne, surface. Hey, man, like that motherfucker is for real. Like, so I tell people, like, when you, like, the real top five, he may not be in my personal top five because I'm older than him, you know what I'm saying? But top five, can't nobody fuck with him, man. Right. Like, he's one of them guys, man, where he, he'll go in there and do... 15 songs in a day and they really be good songs. Right, right. He's a damn whole 15 songs in a day. Man. That's a lot. Oh, that's a lot of drugs. That's a good shit. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you, Lil <laughs> Wayne, when Tune, tune yeah. get busy, man, like yeah. get busy, 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 busy. Wow. So. Yeah, yeah shout out to Wayne. Him and Game are two rappers um, that I really respect. And this is why, because I feel like in their careers, they're some of the only top 40 artists who've gotten better at their craft mm -hmm. on a from an M MC perspective like to me when game first started he was a, he was a, he was a decent rapper he yeah. wasn't no monster but he just turned himself into a motherfucking monster like he just became a better yeah. MC just year after year after, and I feel like uh Wayne did the same thing um talk about challenging yourself as a rapper um, in comparison to people like the game and uh, and Wayne, because in a lot of our eyes, you know what I'm saying, you right there on that same level. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I ain't fucking with Wayne. No, nah. not Wayne. Uh, Chuck is is greater in a sense; he's accomplished more. Um, 
rapping with Chuck is always rapping with game. Excuse me, rapping with game. I don't keep calling him Chuck. Rapping with game is uh. I always felt I did good with him because I would just be me. Right. Like game is rapping some to a degree. I'm actually just telling you what it is. So right. that would work with him. Right. So I knew I could always keep up with him on every track. Like we wouldn't do the same thing. Right. You would hear my stuff and it would sound completely different than what he's doing. Right. So it was always more than great enough to be just as good. Wayne is just, Wayne is one of the few, the two times I ever felt like, Somebody like served me on a, on a record. Is that right? Haters was the first time in my life I was like, damn, like this fucked up. Man, okay. Yeah, and the second time was B.O.B. I have a song called Knock It Out. Right. And Bob, yeah, B.O.B. like fucked it up. Like, and B. I was o. like, B. damn, yeah. yeah. Okay. I would have never expected I, that one. I remember when you uh, let us listen to that. Well, Bob yeah. and I was listening. Yeah. Bob was like, yeah. "That was one of the first yeah. times in my life I ever wanted to rewrite. I never rewrote a verse in life, ever, never. If I, I, I meant it what I said it the first time. Yeah, that was the time I was like, yeah, I need to rewrap it. But I thought to myself, like, I put so much into the music, you know, with Sega making the beat and producing it. That I was like, well, the music is speaking for me too. But I still hear that record and be like, damn, man, like." Bob is another one of them dudes. B.O.B. is one of them dudes that's so underrated that's really like a killer. Yes, man. I ain't going to lie. I, 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 don't, I really don't think much of him as a rapper, but I never really went into, you know what I'm saying? Check Bob out as an MC. Yeah, Bob I'm a, could really do the shit. Yeah, I'm going to check him out. Yeah, because, I mean, he was a commercial hit. He had like three or four commercial, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah shout out to B.O.B. I'm going to definitely dive yeah. into, the, uh, into the catalog. We're going to go on a, 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 a quick commercial break, man. When we get back, we're going to have more with Glasses Malone, man. Straight up. Greg Facts. Man. Know me over there, the gangsters call me square, but ain't nobody running up brick flare airs. Fake fight, rape type, test them hairs. DNA will pray, extend pairs. Cut off too many niggas wearing jars. Equal testimony recording, so run off and go get fly and kill them all like COVID guy. Cause every real nigga knows his why. Uh, black is beautiful to me, this is all I see. It helps my cheat. No more buying bricks, I only buy IPs The jack of man gon' starve and need to buy IVs I'm not a street nigga, that's repeat nigga for defeat nigga I got a Kevin Hart, so let me explain This black on black is bum clothes, we need a change So lighten up a tad bit and laugh at my pain Hey, I'm talking to you Bitch, pour me a drink This woman is cute and this one here need a shrink I see it all coming so I know when to blink Take a bump with this white girl so you know what to think Or get slapped with a loose glove and then hang up a man I'm not a pimp, I'm a prophet Since life is a bitch, I tell that hoe when to stop You know shit, well if I own something, you can get it from God Brother, you're a god and it's my favorite earth At war with these mortals, never wage your thirst Make her taste it first, finger dipped in slurp If pussy smelled like a gator burp, that's where danger lurks Look, man, lean as damn near head round, hit the brakes and pause you are not a tough guy, those withdrawals Cause nausea to body aches, clothes and walls Pistols pop for addiction, exposed to calls Throwaway shooter, you'll be dead in a week And I'll be in Bermuda Code it calls, easy puller Leave if not constructive Nearly fuller and forklift courtship Unload your problems and force fit courtship You can't talk while I'm talking She likes to spend money Door sit poor chick surprise her with financial advisor for hate. I'm talking to you, bitch. Pull me a trick. This woman is cute, and this one here need a shrink. I see it all coming, so I know when to blink. Take a bump with this white girl, so you know what to think. Or get slapped with a loose glove, and then hang up a mink. I'm not a pimp, I'm a prophet. Since life is a bitch, I tell that hoe when to stop. You know damn well if I own something, you can get it from God. Yeah, uh, I'm calling because I'd like to file a complaint, if at all possible, in order of restraint. Mm -hmm. My mouth, she hit me in my mouth. Caught her fucking on the nose, and then she snuck me. Yes, ma'am, she snuck me. Oh, Blindsided me like the fat nigga from that movie. Oh, what you mean you don't understand? Well, I tell you this first. 
If I try to lip sync right now, there'd be blood in my verse. Oh, you think this shit is funny? <laughs> but what you fail to realize is this shit, bitch. I got property over there. My fishing pole, the rest of my tank tops, a tripod, a turtle leash, a wood grain dots and steering wheel, and a bottle of bleach. One second, ma'am. Uh, let me click over. That's her on the other line. You dirty bitch! A nose, bitch! You fucking on a nose, bitch! And then y'all wanna turn around and jump on a nigga? Oh, I'm gonna fuck you, bitch. A nose? I'm tired of people not saying what it is, man. I'm a director. Hey, I'm a director. <laughs> Places, everybody. Son, I apologize. I took some risks to provide for you and your mother. It landed me in jail for eight years, and it took me away from you. Excuse me. What's up, Pimp? Hey. What's going on, Flint? Just left the shop, man. You left us up there. I figured you might oh, need okay. this. Oh, okay. Appreciate here, man. that, What y'all got going on up here? Oh, right. y'all chilling. What's happening? Hey, Charlie, what's up, my nigga? What's the word, what's my guy? What's up, oh, big old man? man? What's the word, big dog? Man, I ain't seen you in a minute, you, man. What you been up to? Oh, shit. Not drinking enough protein shakes, yeah, obviously. Yeah, you, you know, man. You, when you light-skinned, you, you got to play the part, man, so don't nobody fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you can use that kind of life, man. Fuck the kids, man. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. What's been going on, though, man? I'm telling you, nephew been out there doing it big, though. All these views, man. What is this nigga doing? This man is a lyrical and creative genius. I need me a thick but no homo, though, because that's that gay shit. Nigga, as long as I say no homo, it's not gay, right? Absolutely right, sir. Anime. Shout out to Charlie Google's film. <laughs> Attention, kick on me, poppy. I teach a This is so dumb. Everything about this was iconic. Let me know what you think, bro. I got you. We should call. Like, this needs to be the best meme. This needs to be the next Old Town Road. <laughs> What's going on with you, you big French bull, Mastiff Terrier looking motherfucker, you dog ass nigga, man. You just like your daddy, man. Look at you, boy. You get big. Ah, shit. Nigga, I almost broke my hand, you bum. What you feeding this nigga? You a got whole lot of greens. You man. got some more of it? I'm hungry. They got some weed in here. <laughs> I want to take some time, though, man. I got to thank y'all, man. Okay. First of all, I want to thank you for holding down the shop while I was in, in the penitentiary, man. I'm just saying, right. just all you got to yeah. do, nigga, is put the. Yeah, run gotta, the alternator. Run the line to the alternator. Yeah, the, the tube got to go in the hole. Without you, none of this would be possible. Right on. I love you, man. Brother-in-law, you've been a rock, man. You put money on my books. You kept me eating while I was locked down. You was there for my son. You've been a rock for my wife. Whatever you need, I got you, man. I'm just, I'm just humbled by that, brother. I got to say, though, man, if I had something in my glass, I would toast you. You've been doing right by my sister, and I really honor and appreciate you for that. I know things ain't been perfect, but you've been doing the best that you can. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, brother. And I appreciate you for that. Dad, me, glass me up anyhow. Even though mine's is empty, toast to you. To my son, man, I, I, I apologize, Junior. I wasn't living right. And because of that, the system took me away from you. The show you are watching is a paid program or advertisement. USA Network is not responsible for the claims and representations made by the sponsor. Hello world, I'm Cephas X. Hotel, I have a breakthrough for you today. Years ago, my ex-wife, come on, my beautiful ex-wife, we traveled to Kemet. I picked up what I thought was a harmless blueberry. Unbeknownst to me, it was a Godoji berry. Godoji. Godoji berries have healing qualities. They heal any and everything. You ain't got no hands? Godoji berry. You got a bad knee? Godoji berry. You a little slow and don't know where to go? Godoji berry. Baby, bring me a berry. Hurry up now. Hurry up, baby. Okay, baby. I mean, you need a damn dagger to give me a berry? Why you got a dagger? My bad, baby. Okay, I mean, you know... Get the fuck up out the screen. Look. Yeah, this dude got the key to success, homie. You know, you're in and out. You're in and out. You just need to be out more times than you're in.
Uh, and uh, I'm gonna get to that, okay? I mean, are you the cameraman or are you, are you me, okay? I'm me, you the cameraman, okay? Look, we walk the path of the great migration. Dogs don't think barks, they think words. Can you please go get me the bits? Bits. <laughs> hurry up, hurry up. Okay, look, look, look. I'm gonna eat this berry. Now, look, there's a dog there. Look, look. We're gonna bark at the dog. It's, it's, ain't nothing gonna happen. What, ready? Let's mm -hmm. bark. Look. <laughs> See, nothing, nothing. The dog is not responding. See, no joining. The dog doesn't know. Right? But when I get on my knees, I say, come here, boy. Come here, boy. Come here, boy. The dog comes right to me. See, the Godosian bear. It works here. And I swear, this is not a scam. But you don't mean you. Hey, go dial this number. Get them berries. Hello? <coughs> Hello? Who we getting collect calls from, baby? We getting collect... Okay, Joker. Hi, can I speak to Cephas X, please? Hold on. I'm trying to get a 3.5 of the Joja Berry. What? Could, I... <laughs> Could you wrap those up in wool? Are you playing? Hang up the phone! Alrighty. <laughs> Why y'all people? Serious callers, please. Okay, who? Carla, how you doing, Carla? How can I help you, Carla? Yo, Greg, it's your pops. What's pop? It's your pops. Code 819. Come on, man. 819. I don't even remember. Police. Police. At the end of the day, I can't complain. The only enemy I have is me and my own big head. <laughs> me and Charlie Google's been running scams since 1985, partner. Get it from God, my nigga. Are you a philosopher? Kind of unintentionally, I guess, yeah. Also, life is a beep, man. All my knowledge base is on how to control the bitch of life. That's the only one that is fucking with you and everybody else. And if you don't control it, she's gonna run right over. Shut up, bitch! I said pancakes, bitch, okay? Turkey bacon is cool too, but I need pancakes as well, okay, bitch? That's all I'm saying. You see, I'm over here doing an interview. I know you probably got a nigga. Whatever, just pancakes and turkey bacon, bitch. And I mean, you gotta control life. Cause everybody's fucking with it. So what makes you different? Oh. You've been bitten by the snake. I can tell cause you're looking for mistakes like great don't come with second takes. And that search for perfection, the journey goes the ways. How you on but you ain't? Crystal ball says y'all ain't saints. Nick. Uh, and y'all ain't crew, he the boss He don't do that greyhound with you The black bag belongs to you for a town or two Make friends with a bum, sleep on the street And that's the only nigga down with you <laughs> Cause you all you got Preacher man can't do it, nigga call your shot He done brain fucked your girl And now she bringing them all you got Brace that label of sinner, now your balls is chopped But once you believe in you, then it's all to stop Cutthroats and scoundrels, you keep a lot of niggas around. A circus over there, and they waiting to clown. Cause you lost what they found. Killers, cutthroats, and scoundrels, you keep a lot of niggas around. You. It's a circus over there, and they waiting to clown you. Cause you lost what they found. I only know what I know Sometimes I fall short when I'm slapping a hoe Mother told me hit back, father told me get strapped So when they come swinging, all you need is click clack Them hungry niggas will extort you, they almost forced to How you in Rome and they talk to Caesar Them west side niggas gon' check your visa uh. Yeah, no stab, that's a crab Can't run with a Charlie horse unlit Glam plus that bitch, she with them niggas All shit snap, she done turn your whole tail into a target trap 
They might as well take your bread, but hopefully they leave your head. Another Louis bag and we left for dead. It's group economics, dog and sled. If we don't pull for each other, then there's trouble ahead. Killers, cutthroats, and scoundrels. You keep a lot of niggas around you. It's a circus over there, and they waiting to clown you. Cause you lost where they found you. Cutthroats, killers, and scoundrels. You keep a lot of niggas around you. She looking for a layup. I could tell cause when she talks, she don't say much. And she used to be an A cup. Got a new body from the waist up. From a setup bitch to a setup miss. She like a drug dealer cause she set up licks. Uh, and she halfway conscious. Whole tepping in this halfway nonsense. How the fuck are you the real McCoy? When I meet you with the truth, but the vibe is soy. Cutthroats and scoundrels, you keep a lot of niggas around you. It's a circus over there, and they waiting to clown you. Cause you lost where they found I paid a million times for one mistake and that's my plate Label me a chauvinist cause I treat women like people If that's my equal, take this mask and gloves and do exactly what they ask of us Queen, I am not a king and we are not nobility No imaginary friends, no fake tranquility Only goal is to survive and you are not my enemy And when I take a gander at your standards, it's based on them over there, you hope and the same people we talk to use soap They used to hang us by a rope Lost sight of what's right, now you're praying to a pope And it's a God right here, we are one and the same Thank them for my contribution, one in my brain Just a nigga with a pistol willing to die for you With my faith doing the seeing that your eyes should do I'm leaning on my spear, a soldier fuck the fear We gon' make it through, the God and you is here We gon' make it through, we gon' make it through A soldier fuck the fear We gon' make it through The God and you is here We gon' make it through We gon' make it through Me and you We gon' make it through Friends separate From difference of opinion Cause every man wants some dominion over endings The homies getting preachy He started quoting Malcolm X and Nietzsche He started saying shit like he could teach me But I love it when we rock Cause Dunny is my eye But his mind is Jumbo Jack Cause it is out the box And I'm comfortable Relaxed in my recliner, stick the norms like the diner Till this shit came out of China It made us all nervous Is this shit urgent? Or do y'all just not wanna pay the baby boomers for their service? Here are my conspiracy blinds If there are mine, it's never nine Me too, it's cocked back and I'm gleeful And happy to be here like when shit is free here Rudolph raised around people cause I don't see fear Or feel the sentiments You're either here for that smoke or in defensive I'm leaning on my spear, a soldier fuck the fear We gon' make it through, the God and you is here We gon' make it through, we gon' make it through Me and you, we gon' make it through I'm leaning on my spear, a soldier fuck the fear We gon' make it through, the God and you is here We gon' make it through, we gon' make it through
Doing Lamaze and all type of shit. And they drafted Jalen Green. The Casamigos. Yeah, the 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 raspberry strong. Get take another one, nigga. I already know you. I'm good, bro. He snorting the crumbs out his hand. That nigga said snorting the crumbs out his hand. Show ready. Show can't be ready. That motherfucker rubbing his hands. We back. While we was gone, man, uh, Show was trying to really convince Glasses that he knew him. <laughs> glasses, was just, <laughs> glasses was just shaking his head like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, that's nigga, you tried, nigga, when we was off the show, you tried to uh, convince a woodpecker y'all wasn't related. Ah, oh, there you go. Long nose nigga. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I don't know because I do know because. Okay, you sure. know it. Okay. <laughs> that's that's cool. This nigga uh, show. Nigga Give it up for show. He back, man. Hey, hey, show hey, back. Hey, show hey, back in his back. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. Yes. Man, where you been, so what happened? Man, I've been in Vegas, bro. You know, I always be hitting the slots on the penny machines and shit like that. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm a uh, regular out there, so they get nigga free rooms and shit. Todd, anything you want to say? <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope it went well with you and your tutor, nigga. <laughs> Welcome back, nigga. Welcome back, nigga. Nigga, you watched The Last Dragon naked. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga screamed, Bruce Leroy. <laughs> you, you, you wanted to watch The Last Dragon, but couldn't read the DVD cover, nigga. <laughs> this is Roots! What the fuck? <laughs> You got fortune cookie messages under your bandana, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, you got your you got your license plate picture on your shirt, nigga. <laughs> the crooked license. mouth, nigga, with the beard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Just like your barber, your your chin barber's techniques, nigga. Weak. All right, let's get back. man. I just got right yeah, to it. Huh? Yeah, I feel like this should be an element day. of West Coast hip hop. It has to be though. Comedy is so important. It is. Just the whole bag. I know some savages, nigga. Yeah. This needs to be an element, man, because every nigga has went through this, man. You yeah, know that's, what I mean? That's your right to pass it on. It the West is, Coast. man. What's the coldest bag a nigga ever hit you with? It, Internet in person where you read it, you know what I mean? Or heard him say it. He was like, this is funny to the motherfucker. Oh, man, I don't even remember. I, you know what? I fucked up my mind to stop, forget stuff like that. Right. But it been some good ones. Niggas Bla be having some jokes. Blaze, yeah. coldest, coldest shot a nigga ever hit you with on the... Man, I, 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 I heard a nigga tell, tell this dude... Uh, <laughs> He got on some of the glory boots. Like, oh, from glory. Yeah, we looked down at that nigga boots. It was like, God. Damn, so, so coldest roast a nigga yeah, ever hit you with. I remember my teacher told me, he called me man child. Because I was the biggest nigga in class. He told me I used to hand my clothes down to my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Robbins, nigga. Like, like he, that nigga was a Jamaican nigga. <laughs> Teacher, shout out to Mr. Robbins. He was a real serious uh, Jamaican English teacher, but he will roast your ass with a spelling word. Teach you patois, nigga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Jamaican. This nigga will roast anybody in the class. He'll like let you go ahead and do the spelling words yeah. and roast a nigga with that word. Yeah, that's like, so. How did you do? How did you do the spelling words? I did great, man. Okay. okay. How you doing with your weight loss, nigga? Yeah. Like, how you doing with that Jenny Craig, nigga? Yeah. You look like an extra on Donkey Kong. Nigga. <laughs> <laughs> on my face. Yeah, hey, nigga, you look like one of the extras in the Disorderlies, nigga. Yeah. I baby is a big man. Yeah. Nigga. Brush your beard, nigga, and stop yeah. following yeah. my goddamn yeah. jokes. Yeah. Hey, so I follow my jokes and brush your beard. Yeah. Yeah. Nigga, you need, nigga, you need to follow a dietitian. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That nigga show nutted in the bag and tried to claim it on his taxes. Nigga. <laughs> <laughs> it's my oldest child. I got a million kids. <laughs> my nigga, you got, my nigga, you got a. <laughs> I got a million kids. I got two point seven million kids. You still take care of them. Nigga, you got lightsaber sleeves, nigga. Damn. So, uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, I forgot this show, shit. He turned it up, man. He turned it up. He's going he's now. Yeah. Turn it up. He turned everything but a page around this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 every, hey, every time. Hey, hey, DeWan get hungry every time he trusts his gut feeling. <laughs> you read that wrong. You read that wrong. <laughs> Show ass get wet every time you find out a female dog is in heat. Like, <laughs> 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 
Hey, you, you, let, fuck it? you let you let niggas blow in your mouth when your food too hot. <laughs> what? Uh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, that was uh, a savage one, baby. That's a fucking nigga. Uh, that nigga show only played dominoes with retarded kids. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, so let me ask y'all a question. Are this is this shit rooted in reality? No. <laughs> <laughs> you talking about the jokes? Bro, it's just great. Yeah, it's like, like a freestyle battle. You know what I'm saying? No, look, when he show up, this is what he this is what he do. This is his this is his role. No, because I'm like, is he like not smart? Like Look, look, that's the running on joke. That's the running joke. These niggas, these niggas was having problems reading a page and shit like that. You know, stuttering, you know, and I said they need to be sponsored by Hooked on Phonics. And they said, nigga, you read. I said, no, I don't he want to. Down. He turned down the I read phase. He, he turned down money. He turned down money. He turned down money. Let's say that part. So that's what been happening, bro. That's what we're going on. Let me tell the audience real quick. For those in the audience that didn't see, Duncan offered... This nigga twenty bucks to read. I need twenty. And he, <laughs> and, 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 and he said, "I'm good." They got me a hundred dollars the other week for eating, for eating the hot chili pepper. So he, 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 he took twenty okay, bucks to eat the jalapeno. They helped you over. Okay. All right. They offered you twenty dollars to read. I need it. All he had to read was one line. Hey, hey, he got twenty bucks. Oh, I get it. Hey, that's one line. 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 Why? Why? That's crazy. That is. I, okay, I get it now. The homie can read. My guy's like four. Listen, man. Like, nigga didn't have on no cargo pants. He had two pockets, and that was it. That was it, man. No, because I'm asking because it's just like. It, jokes is funnier when they like rooted in reality. Yeah. 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 So I'm like, okay, wait a minute, that's yeah. fucked up, y'all. There's, there's a few realities that we know that's like he like he pay his barber to keep fucking up his hairline. Like, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's his hair in the river. You see how your hairline is going straight? Don't do that. Like sometimes it's gonna be musty, so the musty. Party, <laughs> 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 my nigga, in here today. It's you too, nigga. Nah, nigga, it's your neck. <laughs> uh, it's you too, yeah. What's your neck when you're at home? You done came in here smelling like yesterday a few yeah. times, nigga. Nah, nah, nigga. nah, yes, nah yeah. never. They got be your creases in your neck, nigga. You gotta wipe under that motherfucker. Hey, it's like Tyson yeah. said, man. It's, it's two sides. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they got their story. He got. But so, it is reality. Reality yeah, is yeah. the nigga was full that day. That's yeah, full Some, that sometimes shit is gonna happen. That's, that's you see, you see oh, when he came in here. Who wanna be dealing with extra bills and shit? You, know what I'm okay. yeah. Yeah. you yeah. see, you yeah. see yeah. earlier yeah. when he came in here, the so nigga was turning into a werewolf behind you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna read two sentences. Okay. Two left. Okay. We're gonna keep passing. We're gonna have education. This is a fucked up thing. You're gonna teach for this motherfucker today. This is gonna teach for this. You touch the words with your nose. That was good. That was good. We're gonna see how funny this is. There may be some considerable truth to the first impression of what inspired Zenin and. <laughs> Not funny, because I'm looking at it. That's <laughs> fucked up. My bad, bro. Stop looking at shit. I'm looking back at the man. <laughs> That's how fucked up it is. Zenin and of the audience he wished to address. Does anybody want to go next? Okay. 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 But it fails to clarify the context in which his Socratic writings must be understood. Indeed, it leaves no place for those writings. For Xenophon demonstrates in his most extensive treatment 
of the gentlemanly life and character of the gentleman (laughs) as such with no interest (laughs) in Socrates. This nigga read it for free. (laughs) (laughs) Here we go. The Socratic and non... All right, Socratic and non-Socratic and to bring into the light their possibility to possible unity by suggesting that <laughs> Xenophon <laughs> may, may have been one who pursued the Socratic Socratic question of the best way of life without ever coming to accept completely the Socratic answer that the way of life is a ph- philosophic one. You let okay. a nigga, that, English is a second language, bro. You, you got, got me fucked up. up. <laughs> you got me fucked up. You got me fucked up. Reason. You said second language, you stupid. <laughs> we we gonna get to you, Sean. We gonna get to you, Sean. We gonna get to you. We gonna get to you, Sean. It's, it's, it's coming. Language, it's, it's we gonna, gonna, we gonna get to you, B.A. Barakas. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on, let me, I, I just need Listen, to get Bron. Okay, go, go, go ahead. Go, I, go, I, I don't got to get gold. I just got to get bronze. Listen, we see your bandana. We know you can read. Read your read your SummerSlam promo on this motherfucker. <laughs> I want you, Rock. I want you. <laughs> so for for those of y'all watching, right, this is a book I recently purchased and I'm reading. And it's on the history of philosophy. Mm-hmm. And it deals with all of the different oh, scenarios uh, since the inception of the current social situation of different people who have created their own philosophical pathways and influenced their contemporaries. So it's a very difficult read. Right. Sometimes you shows read gonna have to see four or five times for you to understand what the fuck is going on. The show's going to have to see a, a psychologist yeah. after this. Okay, uh, we, we, your next show. Yeah, next next. You know what <laughs> <laughs> Show you next. <laughs> That's my bad. He already said it before. Oh my baba! Oh my baba! Oh my baba! That's my fault. I thought I, he told me he was full already. The comments, cuz they <laughs> just going back. Oh my baba! Said cuz heartbeat fast. Oh my baba! Oh, man. No, uh, I, show ain't got to read. Crazy, man. Nah, man, man, but come on, show you. Let, let, let's show you. Come on, show. Read, read one line. One line. Oh, no, we don't do that. To it. It show if you, like you, if you read one line, your guns will turn oh, pink again. Come on, man, read. Okay, so, but look, glasses in life, you pay for what you don't know. Talk about a situation in the industry where you paid either a, a, a high money amount for something you didn't know, or you paid in another way. Shit, my whole time with Cash Money. I spent a lot of years not maximizing potential because I didn't know about records. Um, right. And I was just a crip. I didn't know about hip hop. That's some real <laughs> honest shit. Like, like, I, like, I didn't know sure. about it like right. that. I, didn't, I wouldn't have been able to tell you nothing about it. Um, I knew a lot about music. Like I, My mom was this super music head, so naturally, but I didn't know nothing about the culture. Right, right. So right. just like I made some opportunities, it cost me a lot. If I would have knew what I was doing, this is a whole different conversation. Right. So it cost me some years. It cost me my thirties. Right. That's what it cost me. Mm. Man. It cost me ten years. Man. Yeah, just to catch up. Right. So let's talk about uh meeting the legend, you know what I'm saying? And working with the legend, Mac Ten. Um, how did that come about and how was that experience? Um, I wrote a blog on Jay Z on my MySpace, nigga. Like just right. about it was about Kingdom Come. Like I'm a writer. You know what I'm saying? I read a lot and I write. I... <laughs> <laughs> you, you be careful with that word. <laughs> you, you be careful with that word up in here, man. You don't, you don't just throw that around. A lot of niggas get to tripping. <laughs> Hey, that nigga gonna sprain his diaphragm. Talk- we love him. <laughs> you talking to the nigga who put out Tupac Must Die, man? man. So, yeah, nah, man. so I read a lot and I write a lot. So I just thought I thought he got a hard sh- a hard shake on um, a cold shake on how people was treating that project, Kingdom Come. Right. And Mac read it, and Mac just thought it was like real polarizing the whole article. And um, nigga called me on the phone. It's like, man, we just chopping it up about it. And then he was like, um, what's up with your situation? I'm like, man, I'm free right now. So he was like, let's meet up. And I remember Mac from the streets. Like, when I'm on Crenshaw, I have my low ride and everything. You didn't see a lot of rappers. Really, you didn't see none. Right. 
Um, I heard about eight being out there before my time, but I didn't see no MCA. rappers. Yeah, eight right. was out there for sure. Yeah. The right people said he was out there. Um, but Mac was one of those rappers you would see. I remember Mac and Lil Ernie from Watts hopped against each other for 10000 at the lake. Wow, yeah. Got a low riding thing. So, like, Mac was somebody I would see. So, when he wanted to meet up, I met with him, man. I played him records, certified some records, and he just was like, man, I'm fucking with you. Let's do it. Right. And that's really the end all be all for that. So, what's your favorite re record by Glasses? My favorite one? One that, uh, the one that really fucked with me, like that kind of like got the clubs, was that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? Because it was Certainly. the time. Because that's, that's like when I uh, heard about you and that other song, I Get Dough. Oh, yeah, I yeah. Get Dough. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Those is the ones that like, oh, and uh, uh, Knock It Out. Because yeah. I was actually there when he was like, yo, like he was humble as shit. Like, was, I, it, was he there, homie? Yeah. For real? <laughs> yeah, I was there, my nigga. Like, <laughs> it was in the grove. Yeah, we was at, we was upstairs at Tommy Gunn I'm studio. Yeah. With you, <laughs> but when he heard it. But when he oh, heard, yeah. but when he played, that nigga can't read, well, taking everything personal. <laughs> God damn, nigga. So, it's your decision you can't read. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, that, that's a song I still bump in my, uh, my car today because I like the way how he did the LL Cool J sample. The ha ha ha. That was, uh, yeah. like, that shit is like, I feel like that shit should have went way further. Like, you know what I mean? Man, and, that was, to me, that was a banger. Like, I put that shit on repeat when I that was that. Uh, so let's talk about why records like that, because you have about four or five records that I felt um, were worthy of, of whatever the hottest shit was at the time. Let's talk about why records don't go further in the, in the business of hip-hop, how that comes into play with how much you hear a record, how popular it is, and so on and so forth. It just takes a team. You know, it's, it's so many radio stations across the country. Um, everybody got records from right around the corner where they at. So you need a team of people to go. You know, you hear about all the stories about payola. Some of it is partially true, but it's not really true. Like most major stations, you can't pay for your. They making millions of dollars off advertisement. Right. They not finna play your whack shit and lose. So money. my little fifteen hundred ain't really. That right. ain't nothing. That's like they gonna sneeze it now. <laughs> now in backwoods Alabama, right, right, gonna be the number one played artist. Right, right, but right. But you come to a big dog market, Los Angeles, the Bay. Dallas, Chicago, New York, the top five markets in the country. Yeah, that's a joke. Right, right. So the records that should perform, like he's talking about, like Knock It Out, that's Sly, Sly and the Family Stone, too. Like, that's where L got the sample from. Mm. So that's what I was on when I actually made it thinking about that. But then I flipped the L part of it. Um, it's just business to go with it. You know, getting exposure. No different than a comedian. No different than anything else. You got to right. know. You got to have a team of people to expose the masses to it. Right, right. And um, that's what record labels kill at. They got these big teams. You know, uh, um, a top 40 record might got a staff of 200 people. Wow. This, man, that's wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, wow. It could be like two people. So it's two main people that run it, you know, for the record label on the West Coast. They might got... 10 people under them a piece. Those 10 people under them got another 15, 20 people under them a piece. Same in the Midwest, same in the South, same on the East. Right. And everybody's just going around sharing it and all everybody just working together. Right. So it's um, independent. It's tough to do it. Today, it's more possible. Right, right. You know what so, I mean? so, so in the time that we came up, you record promoters were like a big thing, right? Yeah, the indie, the middleman. Right. It's like the middleman to the dope spot. Right, right, definitely, definitely. Talk about the importance of a of a of the right person promoting your record to the labels, or I'm sorry, to the stations, because a lot of people in America don't even know what that job description is and why Man, it's important. the indie is everything, because um, most time people don't want to get, you know, everybody, like a station like Power 106, it makes millions of dollars off advertising. So they don't really care about the music outside of it sustaining a business right so they don't care that they on the west all that shit don't matter they don't care that they in la none of that shit matters right the bottom line is the dollar matters so you know like you selling anything like you seen the mcdonald's brothers feel me and they was they had a great business and it was doing fine but then you take a salesman like ray crock and that shit becomes next level hiv yep so you had a question yeah. what do you like you said like it costs bread so what do you say for the indie artists that can't get that kind of resource? Like, what kind of things you think he should go or she should go through to get those resources? Because you said money is a big factor in this game. No, it's not a big factor, but it's you need it. Like any business, if you start any business, if we start a this beet juice, if we start selling beet juice, 
it, you got to have some business, some economics to get it exposed. Right. Every business you start or any business requires some kind of economic exchange to make some people work for you. So, you know, if you if you if you saying how do you do it without the the record business, then the record itself. That's part of why I made Tupac Must Die. Mm. Like independently, you know, I'm. We talking about a hundred some thousand dollars. It's different to have millions of dollars. So you got to have something that's so contagious that people want to talk about on their own. So you really, it can't just be what you think is tight. Right. Like it, it, it need to be a movement. Right. right. You know what I mean? Um, that's why diss records do so well. Right. right. People right. so mm-hmm. nosy and they want to be in the mix of other people's business. So that type of exchange, it just people just flock to it. Well, right. Todd. Uh, Tell, talk about your whole marketing strategy behind Taco Tuesday and how you've been putting money behind that. Like, what, <laughs> real spit. Like, how, 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 have you, how have you been marketing that record? So, Taco Tuesday, um, it's been a thing. You know, LeBron is out there, big Taco Tuesday. And so, we got out there and made a song. You know what I'm saying? Taco Tuesday. And instead of 16s for the, for the verse, it's me doing comedy about tacos. You know what I'm saying? And then, you first heard about Taco Tuesday with Brian? No. I, I, no, I, I love Taco Tuesday. So, no, I'm saying, is it, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a taco. Man. Man. No, so I'm a taco connoisseur, right? right? There's, there's diff- I only like tacos from a certain place, and it got to be a certain way. You know what I mean? You like nigga tacos? No, not really. I like the carne asada from the Mexican spot with the little white cheese you on it. Like nigga tacos? I mean, they cool from the house ones. Is cool. They cool, but that's not what I want to go out of order. You know what I'm saying? I've been to the spot out there, in, um, out there, um, in Watts, the taco spot, Taco Pete. Yeah, that's cool. But I was like, all right, I eat it because I'm hungry. But that ain't what so I'm you want to say going something to Todd about that? Are you? <laughs> Okay. Nah, cause you, I know he. I can. I feel it coming off him. Of <laughs> but yeah, so, ta- so, so you know, I wanted to put out something for the for the real taco lovers. You know what I'm saying out there. And so, I was hoping that that shit would blow from Taco Tuesday exposure, and it's on the album. So you know, get the shit. Niggas paying to tell they jokes. Girl. Oh yeah. Hey, <laughs> 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 so you can see that shit big. <laughs> <laughs> you two that shit, bro. Are they killing us up in here? No, I love it though. I fuck with it though. Nah, but nah, that's. I was just saying. I was thinking about that. Um, so you see the, the draft, the trade happened. Right, right. Oh Russell yeah. Oh, oh you, well, w- welcome home, pop. Russell Westbrook. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 How would you promote that record? Being that you, being that you in the, you know, in the executive <laughs> position now, you sign an artist. He got a song called Taco Tuesday. What kind of angles would you take to make that record something that everybody would fuck with? As a record, for sure, I'd focus on Tuesdays debuting it. Um, it just depends, man. There's so many different things. Like, so this right is three parts, right? It's promotion. Like marketing is 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 almost like is the story behind something, right? Taco Tuesday is its own story, but then you have promotion, and then you have Publicity and you have advertisement. Promotion is when you tell your own story to everybody. Okay. That's uh, publicity is when you pay. Excuse me, is when somebody else tells your story. Okay. Advertisement is when you pay for the story to be told. Okay. So it just depends. Like um, I would try to work out a deal. If you like, especially those type of tacos, I'd be looking towards uh, what's that spot that everybody be going to? It used to be in Lakewood Mall too. Uh, a taco mill? Nah, it's in Lakewood Mall. Not uh-huh. not the brothers. Uh, it's like. El Toritos. Oh. That's I'll be looking. See, at where I'm at now, my name kind of give me a little something extra, so I will be going to El Toritos to be like, let's make a deal for a Taco Tuesday commercial. Yeah. Even the way I think now, I would make the commercial myself. Right. And be like, look, y'all want to get this commercial. Mm-hmm. So, but um, back to what you was asking, it ain't just money. You just got to have something that people really, that strike conversation. We're in a space now where if you're looking on social media, it's all about... Like, nobody give a fuck about you being a star. Everybody's right. their own star. Right. So they want you to contribute content to make their star grow. Right. That's one thing I realized with Tupac Must Die. I knew if everybody could have something that they could talk about, they'd talk about it. Right, right. But if, it, if it's talking about you and your successes, man, nobody give a fuck about your shit. Mm. Right. So. Okay, so it, I feel like you have a, an expert level and understanding of marketing. Yeah, that's probably the best one I figured out. Right, right. So what we're going to do is we, I'm going to make up a game, man. And I'm going to point to somebody. 
and I'm a, and I'm gonna come up with a product, and you tell me how you would market that product to that person <laughs> based on just what you see. You don't know sure. none of these niggas personally, sure. so we gonna go so with it's all uh, brand. Yeah, all brand. So Todd, you selling uh, you trying to sell chopsticks to Todd, <laughs> right? <laughs> to that to to that to that demographic. To a brother in his bandana say, I'm out there. I'm out there. Why are you wearing a band? Like, what's that? Yeah, I'm out. That's my phrase. I'm out there. But why, like a uh, when you jumped out the, the karate thing? <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's a battle. You know what I'm saying? I might have to go to war with this shit, so I'd rather be out there on my karate shit. Like he a karate guy? I mean, he don't know karate, but in his mind, he a hell of a nigga with you. That nigga saw I'm gonna get you sucker on one last, time and got a bandana, nigga. In the last dragon of comedy. Oh, okay, 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 now I like that. So now, now we like got that. some backstory. So now, so again, so just the brand of him, chopsticks. He like, so I, I need to sell him chopsticks. Yeah, yeah. I would hire him to sell chopsticks. Thank oh you. wow, smart move. <laughs> what, what, okay, what do you look like? You have a pair of chopsticks in his back pocket. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Oh, right. you mean these? I would just remake it. for him. I would just remake the last like a last dragon commercial with him as <laughs> right, right, right as Bruce Leroy that's fighting show enough. So he's within the culture, so that makes sense. You have somebody that's within it, and they can talk about it better, and and, and people who are in it can relate. So I was telling Deuce, right? It's five. So it's like so many um, points of arousal right. that are contagious, right? Um, what humor, uh, things that put you in awe, things that are exciting. Tupac must die is about anger and anxiety. So those are the five arousal points when it comes down to the human emotion that make them talk. Right. right. This is why yeah. people can't shut the fuck up. Right. Like um, LeBron James for him puts him in awe. Right. Right, I mean, right, he's right. like, wow, like this nigga's in year 19 and he think he's a top five player because he's just been in all so long right, right, that it's right. like, it's like this is mountain of a man. Right, right, right. Okay. It's like important to know how people think, you know what I'm saying? Because that's when you can talk to them, you can relate to what they're saying. Right, right. So right. for him, I would use him to sell shop sticks versus try to, I would hire him. Right, right. That's smart. Okay, we got DeWan. DeWan rides bikes, right? And you want to sell some Why? Bike. What kind of bikes? He wants but he bicycles? Big but, ass okay, beach but, cruisers. So he's thinking about buying some <laughs> bicycles. He's thinking about buying some biker shorts. <laughs> oh, hell no. <laughs> 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 what else would a biker wear? <laughs> right. Well, you? Of course he wants a biker shorts. Man, go ahead and work your, your magic your with him. Your sneeze is every shade of light skin you are, nigga. <laughs> Fuck you. basketball shorts. <laughs> so he going to, so, we, so how would you market biker shorts? I'll do it with a bra for him. A bra? <laughs> <laughs> Like I bust, hey, like hey. I meet a bra, like I get a, one of a blade special, <laughs> right? With right. somebody that's gonna listen, right? Right. Blade me? special, and like introduce him to her, right? And she'll like him and convince him he looks nice in biker shorts. Okay, right. so what? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, Duane, that's, that, that, that's respect because yeah. you know, uh, uh, you know, him in his right mind, he, he gonna kick somebody out of his fucking right. office. Yeah, but <laughs> right. you saying that, honey? Yeah. So right now, what you selling? You selling self esteem? You you trying to? Build that's it. what. Yeah, some some, some things to yeah. sell certain that's things. Smart. Everything yeah. ain't always like you thirsty. Here goes some water. Right, right, right. I, right. I'd rather sell you water based on health than sell it to you because you thirsty. Because you ain't gonna be thirsty all day. But if you think it's gonna keep you alive, I can sell it to you all day and all night. Right, right. That's a great observation. Wow. Okay, so we got my brother here from Gardena, African, very proud, hardworking brother. We trying to sell him uh, a, so a soccer ball. <laughs> a soccer ball. You know what I'm saying? Is he from Shotgun? Is he from Again, a soccer ball. Already equipped. <laughs> the niggas is he like, from, <laughs> is he from Shotgun or Payback? These? Okay, go ahead. Because <laughs> it matter, like. Right, right, yeah. right, right. right. Yeah. If anything, Where I, you, I, I know shotgun niggas. Okay, so you're shotgun. I grew up with the So, so, um, I probably build it around Raleigh Park. Okay. Um, stomping grounds. Right. Right. Green. Put yeah, some green on it. To the personal shit. <laughs> <laughs> <That's not laughs> because it's just like that's how you sell anything. Just be going. Those, that's how you. Glasses is really tapping. <laughs> no, it's just. Well, that's, yeah, that's real. Nah. <laughs> niggas was fighting over a chicken sandwich, man. man. Yeah. They tapping into the personal. That nigga spot. said stop. Oh the God, they was fighting over that stupid <laughs> ass sandwich. <laughs> Come on, man. No, God and his son. Yeah, that nigga gonna Raleigh beat Park. a nigga up. So I, I would sell Park. him. I would sell him something. You got kids? Nah. Okay, so you don't have kids. I just have to. So it's, so the thing about branding is, right, I only know the brand of him. Right. So I already know, right, if he grew up in Shotgun, he going to have an affinity for Green. <laughs> right. Uh, he going to have an affinity for Riley Park. Right. Uh, 
um, you know, kind of athletic. I'm going to just size him up from the brand itself. Right, right. But only because I'm vested in it. And I'm going to sell him something else, not the soccer ball, because I don't know if he plays soccer. Right, 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 right. So, right. so I'm going to sell him on something else. I'm going right. to sell him on something that I could imagine he's into. Like, I'd rather make a Gardena soccer ball and sell it to him. Right, right. Okay. And, and this is why cats who grew up in the culture we grew up in, the whole... Exactly. Because one part of being a winner in the gangbang culture is figuring out angles on niggas. 100%. Every time. And, and anybody that's grow up in an inner city environment or a very competitive environment, if you don't know how to play with the angles, you're not going to live very long. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Sure. And um, and that's why I had glasses do this, you know what I'm saying, exercise, because I think a lot of people think when they see you make it as a rapper and become who you become, that it was just your talent that got you there. Dig this. White Lightning, he'll tell you, is named after some charm I had. Right, I had right. this clear charm. Usually charm come out yellow because the, the parody in the pipe the is like a, a yellow. Right. Like, yeah, like yellow, like piss. But I had this <laughs> clear charm. Like, I had this pipe and it was clear. You know what I mean? The parody, so it made the charm like seven up. Right, right, right. Like, right. look like water, like seven real up. water. And nobody would have bought it without Shout no title. Style. They'd have been like, nah, I'm cool. Feel me? But when I started putting the marketing behind it, I called it White Lightning and realized it was so potent. I sold people on the strength. Right. I had a title for it, and right. then like if you could if you could hit it twice, you could have it for free. Right, right, right. right. But it was so potent, nobody could go twice. Man. Damn. Nigga, make it instantly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Woo. Man, I, man. Get past that second one, feel me? They stuck and they gone. <clears throat> Money mines. Right, right. So I named my Marketing. first CD after that <laughs> because that was the thing that I got real popular for selling. Right, right. White Lightning. Yeah. And that that added the authenticity. Man. You know, from yeah. the artist's perspective and the consumer. Well, if you yeah. see my first CD right on the back of it, the homie is, like, fucked up, like, high. And it's a 30cc, an ounce bottle of ginseng. That's what we used to sell a charm out of when we would go right. stick for stick. Right, so right. So that's what it was all about initially. You ever yeah. smoke your own product? Never. I never tried no drug. Yeah. I never drank alcohol or tried no drug or nothing. Man. Cigarettes, ca coffee, caffeine, coffee, nothing. Wow. Is, it, is so, it anywhere OG fans can go get that white lightning, man? <laughs> 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 right? Nah, man. I'm, I'm asking for a friend. I got you. I'm a city <laughs> say. I'm a city say. Yeah. I got hey, you. Hey, but nah, real talk. Some other motherfuckers is like white lightning. Yeah. Like, you know, I didn't hear the nigga that certified or something. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. They might want to hear that raw shit. I think you got some cold shit called up. Pay pimping or something else. Man, that was on crack mixtape. That was Whoa. on the tape with all of us. Whoa. And I got that for sure, too, but I don't have that in my email. Yeah, you got to offer that. But that was hard. Blaze was so fucking ice cold, man. <laughs> oh, God, this son. I don't even think Blaze knows. He's so, such nah, he don't because he good at everything. Yeah. Blaze, one of them niggas that was entirely too good at everything, so he never really gave a fuck about none of the things. He told you about that time he took my bitch? I, I could imagine. Took right off my yeah, that's I'm, bro. Blaze, Blaze, bro. I, I get all of the wrestling jokes. I get all the wrestling jokes and shit, cuz. But this nigga for real is a cold ass Mac. Man, you got any stories? Bla me? But on Blaze, on Blaze. Man, no. Every story is always he won at the end. <laughs> bitch, I'll be thinking the bitch tripping and shit. Look like she finna walk out. He come say something to her in her ear and shit. The bitch just go sit down and behave herself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to be like this nigga, boy, ice cold. Yeah, I watched a couple of movies. <laughs> <laughs> I watched Blaze, the Mac. Sure, man. Yeah. man, so so what you got? Your own label now? What you what you doing now? Really just helping where I can. You know what I mean? Like the Giants. You know what I'm saying? It's more marketing for them. They got to run their own label. I'm not signing niggas, man. Like, I'll sign somebody, but I really don't. Right. I don't got time for that shit. Um, you got to care enough about your own career. I don't got enough time to babysit your career, too. Right, right. Um, right. So I got what I'm doing now, just moving to keep telling these stories. Um, I help a lot of people in different ways. Some people I help with marketing. Some people I help with retail. I'm just helping people as I can. Right, right, right. So you're kind of like a freelance mercenary right now. <laughs> on everything. On yeah. God and his son. Okay. So, um, okay, so what are some of the ways uh, these young artists, um, you know, can benefit off of some of your knowledge? If there's somebody out there that got a record they're trying to push, they got some money, they just need some guidance, like, um, you know, what, 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 what are you, well, you know, can they work with you? Like, if yeah, there's somebody so else. I'll give, I'll, look, I'll give advice for free. Like, I'll just consult you for nothing. I don't really need your money. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I got some money. But right. it just, like I was telling him, like, 
the thing that, that kills me about artists that talk to me, if you don't want to fuck the game up, don't talk to me. Right. If you went in to try to, like, niggas will tell me, man, my family's struggling, I need to do this, I need to hook you up with some dope. Right. You don't need to be a rapper. You need to get some of this work. Right, 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 right. <laughs> feel right. Me? So let me hook you up with another nigga that's hustling. Feel right. me? Then you go make some money for your family. Right, right. You got to be in hip hop to want to be that guy. If that's not driving you, if you don't want to, I was telling Royce the Five Nine that if you don't want to crush everything, like you will never really survive in this business. I mean, it's, especially today, it's eighty thousand records coming out every day, or right. somewhere like that. Eight thousand, eighty thousand records coming out every day. So if you're not trying to crush shit, if you ain't trying to just make niggas submit to your will, feel me? Then you in the wrong business. What wow. kind? How do you distinguish? Because I know, like, we all know to help people. You know what I'm saying? Get a game and everything. But how do you distinguish somebody who's trying to really like be serious and wasting your time? I mean, can't nobody waste my time. Shit, okay. I'm only gonna give them enough that I could afford. I like that. So, you know, the, the people who turn out to, like the Giants, for example, they was always dope. They just kind of came together as record makers. They was always nice MCs. But as record makers, it started coming together. And they kind of helped me figure out some things at the end of the day. Right. So I really just help anybody if I can. You know what I'm saying? Um, now, if somebody, like if some label say, hey, you want to do this full time, I'm not taking a job. Right. But... You know, like I'm saying in his situation, like, if you just got a song that's just generic, like, it's an exposure game. You better have a lot of money. And if you don't got a lot of money, you better unearth some shit about culture that's so rooted deep that when it, you pull it out, the dirt and shit just falling off the end of that shit. Give us an example of that type of record. Tupac Must Die. Right. It's one of those things where it's a story that everybody know, but they don't know the perspective. Right. Fuck the police. Um... Any dish record, you know, fuck with Dre Day. Um, nothing but a G thing wouldn't work without fuck with Dre Day. Straight out of Compton doesn't work without fuck the police. Right. Because I don't have to care about that. Um, those those records in hip hop, you know what I mean, where you just unearthing culture. The first time you saw Chief Keef. Right. You know what I mean? Don't like. Right. That mm -hmm. took us into Chicago. You know what I mean? And you culture. never. Right. We seen Lupe. We seen Ye. We seen Common. Right. But we never seen them niggas. No, nah, never. And them niggas was there. Man. And then next thing you know, you're looking at these niggas, you're like, them little kids look wild. And right. next thing you know, on the news about three months later, like, yeah, 700 people got shot this Man. weekend in Chicago. <laughs> it was like, damn. So, Future, you know, the first time, you know, um, uh, what's the damn song? Molly Perkins says. Like, this nigga got a, a song that's dedicated to, like, this opioid addiction that none of us knew was happening in Atlanta. Right, 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 right. Definitely. Um, it's those things where you just unearth that culture. Right. Culture right. is that soil. You know what I mean? It's and when you hear what's going on somewhere else, and you in, a, in another world. Right. And I think what I think what you're definitely expressing is the difference between, um, you know, when you got a generic record that you're trying to break, you're really trying to create a culture around what you're doing. But if you have a record that comes from culture, you're just taking something that's a part of it and just presenting it to the people. It's what you said lifestyle. earlier, as your brother told you. Being part of more than yourself. Right. Like being a spokesman for more than just you. Right. A lot of rappers just feel like somebody care about their story. Man, fuck you. Right. I got my own life, nigga. I don't have to care about your life. So if you're not speaking for people, hip-hop was always, Chuck D was the voice of the people. Ice-T was our voice when we couldn't even get it at the highest level. Right. He told niggas what we was doing, jumping out of back windows, running from police and going to jail and right. slapping holes and right. having curls and popping niggas and shit. Right. Uh, you know what I mean? That's the thing. You, you become the voice of the people. Right. Tupac Must Die became a voice of the culture. What what band do you think, and I think I know what band you're going to say, mm -hmm. but what band do you think does the best <laughs> job of reflecting our culture as a people? You mean as far as like all time? Yep. Uh, probably Parliament Funkadelic. Okay. I'm so, okay, so I thought it would be between Parliament and Earth, Wind, and Fire for you. So Earth, and the, Earth and the, they're different. Earth, and the Fire reflects who we are at our highest. Who we were, who we, who we were in Spain, who we were in ancient Egypt, he, they reflect that. Mm -hmm. They reflect metaphysical spirituality. Right. Parliament reflect who we are as niggas. Right. Because they, they're the foundation of hip hop. I was talking about Bernie Warwell last night. Bernie, that Bernie Warwell synth mm -hmm. is what still is in the DNA of hip hop to this day. Especially Los Angeles. You know, especially mm -hmm. LA. You know what I mean? Juju, uh, Juni Morrison from the Ohio Players got to Parliament Funkadelic. 
Bootsy Collins on bass from James, from James Brown. Brown man. Fred Wesley. Where you come from James Brown? Yeah, man. Fred Wesley from James uh, Brown. Macy uh, Parker from James Brown. Uh, and and you know what I mean? And then you go ahead and get for Felipe Wynn from the Spinners to go ahead and sing, you know, uh, on Not Just Needy. So uh, y- what it is, is it really is a, a party. It shows how black culture is. It's fun. It's loving. It's, it's, it's community. It's cats coming together. And I think they reflect that in their music. Nigga said, Black one of those glasses for being first in line to see Tron. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Niggas ain't shit, bro. Yo, hold up. Hey, Dewan is the glasses of jazz and shit. (laughs) No, that's fire, though. But when you start digging into it, that's the important. You know what's funny who I feel like that about who don't get credit to me? So it's two groups specifically. War. War, yep. Somehow war is like where I'm from, like. That's Compton. Watts, Compton, Long Beach and shit. I feel like war is kind of the lifestyle. Right. The war is a ghetto? That yeah, was... that shit was crazy. Nigga. Right. right? And I'm, I'm digging deep to learn them. And uh, the black national anthem is Commodore Zoom. Right, right, right. The Commodores oh, kind of hey, had this right. feel. Yeah. That's, my, my, my father-in-law produced that. Get the fuck out Zoom, of here. Zoom, all Commodores, yeah, he, 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 uh, he discovered them. He went down to Tuskegee and he discovered them for Motown after working with the Jackson Five. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah that's just a brother you got. That's my kind of guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. But that's what happens. You because you yeah. fall down yeah. and you start yeah. bumping yeah. into all this shit and you be talking. I'm talking to Battle Cat one day. He like, nigga, what the fuck happened to you? I'm like, I don't know, cuz, but it feel good. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, yeah. but yeah, that's crazy. Did y'all? Did they? Let me ask you something. That's crazy. Did TLC have to clear that part at the beginning of that song that he used? Oh, of course. So y'all did catch that? Uh, yeah, that 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 that, that right that sh- that that crescendo yeah. at the beginning and everything. Yeah, that yeah that 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 stuff right there. I don't I don't know the details to it, yeah. but, but I, that's know that, crazy I know that he that, gets his. That's crazy that that little piece puts you in the mind when you hear Zoom and Waterfall and how they the same record. It's the same record, and he, and he and he talks about like I was talking to him about a couple weeks about ago about his uh, music, and he's one of the greatest string composers you'll ever hear. Who? Cool. Uh, Mr. James Carmichael. He's, he's, wow. he's a producer for all that stuff. Lionel Richie. You know who else uses Strange but, Arranger is in the Valley? Um, Paul Reiser? No, nah, Bernard. Uh, oh, Bernard Wright? Bernard Wright. They, I, he was, we were just talking about him last week yeah. when I was over their house. That's they like, they, they, they're, they're friends. Yeah, niggas but, do Michael Jackson shit too. And he talked about how like the strings heal and how as, as, as the body, the strings are the wind and that sound is what heals the soul. Mm. And so when you listen to Zoom, mm. he basically was like, that, yeah, shit that was my cool. intent. And, and every best. time you hear that song, you heal. I, I hated that song as a kid. That's deep shit. Man, it's one. You know, you get older, you start really listening to It felt to like shit. eating vegetables. Yeah. I, I ain't gonna lie. Zoom so <laughs> as a little kid yeah. felt like eating vegetables. It's so long. And then it's also just so like, uh, yeah. <laughs> Feel me? But as a grown man, bro. Nigga, that'll bring a tear to your eye. Bro, what's, hey. listen. I got this skit at the end of my album, bro. It's so dope, and I took it from Kev Mac, but it's Zoom. I use Zoom in the skit. See, I wasn't even going to clear it. Now I know somebody might clear it. <laughs> because it's not a rap song. It's just like a skit where somebody's talking. But you just start realizing why these songs mean something to black people. Definitely. Man, man, you, know what, dope. you know what almost got me the other week? I was a little drunk, a little high. And sounds of blackness came on. Uh, oh, as long as you keep, oh yeah, I'm missing you. That's all. You, you that be like, right songs that'll make me cry. What song? Like, that's actually a good idea. What song almost made me cry? Do you know what fucks me up? Way of the world. Okay. Earth and the fire. fire. That's tear my world. fucking life out, dog. Man, that shit make me so sad and so like, damn, man. And I'm gonna tell you a TV show song that get me. And I don't know why, but nigga, if I'm not paying attention, I'll be I'll be get into deep thought, nigga. The Wonder Years. Hey. <laughs> Where would you go? What you do? That voice. Nigga, sound like Scott Step. Let me ask you a question. Keep it a buck, fool. I'm back. If there was a movie that made you cry. Okay, I'm not going to say it because you're a nigga, so then you don't want nobody to know if some movie made you cry. No, I don't give a fuck. I'm if there was a movie that you felt was like going to make you cry, what movie would that be? Man, that's a good ass question. I'm trying to think. Hardball. Huh? Was it Hardball? When G Baby got knocked down? Oh, man. When Ricky got shot, that shit made me mad. 
But yeah, I think it's the crib. I want to kick Ferris's ass. I, honestly, I think the crib in me got more mad because I never got <laughs> sad. I was like, yo, bust it. I couldn't <laughs> wait till my got on the Every time I watch that shit, I be like, man, he could probably make it this time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, give me one move. One move. Man, if I had to say a movie. I ain't gonna lie, man. What fucks you up? Pursuit of happiness. Yes, I can't watch that. When he got the fucking job. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God and his son. I can't watch that. that shit, bro. No, man. All right. All right. One so. No, he got the job. No, he got the job, bro. Yeah, the fucking job. I noticed men have more. No, but, but you felt like he did. Yeah, they cast my nigga. He didn't, he didn't get the job. Oh, for real? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, man, hey, what, what movie, dog? What movie? I tell um, you. you. You seen King Kong? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga be like, my brother. He <laughs> <laughs> was never. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you why. And this nigga take a Craig. This nigga Craig cried when Wesley took dark skin niggas in New Jack City. Dark skin's over. Right, that nigga also cried when there ain't no meatballs on the spaghetti. He be like, man, what the fuck, man? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I thought you was about to say soul <laughs> food. <laughs> you sweat me balls out your acne, nigga. Oh fuck you, nigga. Now I will say uh, one movie. One movie. I, uh, shit. I just had it in my. I just had that motherfucker. Uh, 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 man, at, men, at the end of Minutes of Society. Okay. Yeah. When, when, when niggas when in Kane got knocked down. Uh, yeah, like well, yeah. It, well, I, Kane I, was, got I, I was like, damn niggas always made to Atlanta. Oh, <laughs> I want. I wanted them. I knew I it was know, coming. I know. Right. Right. Like, I knew it was coming because it was niggas. That's fucked up when so many people you know got knocked down that you be like, wait, when he got knocked right. down that time? Yeah. That's what I was that one nigga? Kane, when Kane got knocked down? So, I, was, I was more like, All right. mine, mine was Pursuit of Happiness. I Pursuit cried of Happiness. That, shit. Yeah. that shit fucked up. I cried in that motherfucker. Nigga, coming to a... <laughs> <laughs> coming to a... <laughs> <laughs> when, <laughs> when Blaze won the Hell in the Cell match, oh, I, I cried like a motherfucker, oh, man. man. Yeah. I, Choked me up. He finally did it after all that time. That top bar. Man, he got mad high, man. I, it, it really fucked me up. But yeah, no, um, Boys in the Hood. I seen it when I was a kid. So yeah, when Ricky got killed, Ricky, you ain't never been a kid, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Back when I was a kid, all your hair was together, nigga. <laughs> it was plush. <laughs> all right, Blaze. Come on, Blaze. Show, show what's your... Uh, it was the crip in him. You know show, I already know Show got a cold one. Oh, free weather, Mike. Two bucks. <laughs> Like, like, yeah, yeah. I knew it was gonna have animals yeah. in it. Right. <laughs> you know what movie fucks me up every time? Damn. I, I see that's why we fuck with each other. Yeah. You know what movie fucks me up? Rudy. Oh when my he got god. The sack. Rudy, yeah. When he got the sack. Oh, oh my god. Rudy is one. Rudy, Rudy pissed me Rudy off. Rudy is one. Man, I said Rudy. this whole goddamn movie for one play, man. Fuck this movie. That was the best play in the world, man. man. Shit hey, what's man that uh, gets you if you're not paying attention? Uh, Gloria gets you a little for bit. For sure. I, oh, oh, yeah, Gloria. Yeah. Nah, for Gloria. sure. I never yeah. ever cared about none. I swear every time I see it. I can't connect. Right, right. I can't yeah. connect to none of the gangster movies. Right. Because that's just so normal. When 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 yeah, Ricky no. got knocked down, yeah. Yeah. when G Baby yeah. got knocked down, I'd be right. like, man, niggas got knocked down. Yeah, yeah. But my my just, in the yeah, but but Glory even then, in. like like Denzel character was just it was just like whatever, fuck you niggas. It, right. I just couldn't help it. Yeah, fuck the character. I for know me it was the story. Right. <laughs> that's what I was gonna say. I'm way for me. Five heartbeats. What? If, if I broke down with anything, man. hold on, hold on, Blaze talking. Hold on, Blaise. Oh, that was sad. No, I was just saying that if I broke down over anything, man, it was one of them uh, historic films, man. One of them back in the day, how they did Slave it. movies. Yeah, that, how they did this kind of shit. That shit like, just made me mad. Mississippi like, Burning didn't get you? I'm like, yeah. That shit made me mad. <laughs> Even when they did that <laughs> to old boy son? Yeah. Yeah. See, that shit Rose just make me mad. Oh, yeah. yeah. Angry. And I think that's what, yeah. that's that gangbanger yeah. shit. I can't watch it. Like, those movies they talking about yeah. just make me mad. They make me want to go out and just slap a white person. Man. I was at the Marlowe King. One at a time, one at a time, Go ahead, no song you. I was at the Martin Luther King Museum in Memphis, uh, uh -huh. the Civil Rights Museum. And it'd be white people right there and shit at the same time. And you go, they turned the hotel where he got knocked down at, at into a museum. Right. And so when you walking through it, you learning about really the real true shit of slavery. And you walk upstairs and you look in and you they showing you the whole civil rights movement. And you get to Martin Luther King, the room where he got knocked down at. 
Right, right, right. And they turn into a museum. That whole hotel is the right. front of a museum. Oh, wow. And when you're walking around, you're looking in the rooms right. where his room was at and his partner was at. Right. And it's white people reading the shit, and I'm looking like it's y'all. Like, I never get sad. I get mad. Angry. No, I'm with you. Punk ass. Ass. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you think the emotionality of entertainment is one of the things that they use to tap into us with mind control. Oh, yeah. Marketing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Talk about it. Because the way our brain works, our subconscious is always on. And once you see an image, your, sub your subconscious automatically records it. Right. But when you can take the information and attach an emotion to it, that's when you get long-term memory. Right. Long-term memory is information plus emotion. Emotion validates fantasy. Yeah. Right. Okay. And so that, that's why they can tell you lies all goddamn day. And tell you to, to get the woomty wamps and the woomty wamps and all that stuff and lie all day because it's like we attach it to emotion. You might hurt grandmama. You know what I mean? And so. And show cried in the movie. To <laughs> 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 it's just funny. I'm, I'm so lost right now. <laughs> Let's not pay attention to that screen. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Fuck, man. <laughs> Niggas get right in on the jokes. Niggas come oh, here yeah. to joke. Right. They, they but I realized stop. something about people like us. We only got tears of joy. Right. Yeah, we don't right. have tears for like right. sadness. Right. Like yeah. my sadness turned into anger. Right. When right. Ricky got shot, I I just wanted to kill Ferris Punk ass. Man, man. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Like I, I I really when I seen it again at Regina King, that ain't never punk ass Ferris. I right. Like, <laughs> every time now I think about punk ass Ferris. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And as the, the the dude who was driving the car is like a uh, a really successful Christian rapper too, Deezer D. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I never he, paid attention to the driver. Yeah, I only remember the, the the real nigga. Yeah, gospel rapper. No, Ferris wasn't driving. Deezer D. He passed away. Huh? He passed away. Yeah. Deezer D passed away. No, no, no. Shooter, the nigga, the main nigga, the gunner is a real blood. Though. Right, right, right. That's he, why he sold that because that nigga shit looked jungles, right? Yeah, yeah. His shit looked real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That nigga, the way he was doing it, his looks, I was like, that nigga really did that. Yeah, yeah. He died in the pen. Yeah, he was a real fool. I like, I liked his, I liked him. And caffeine characters, them niggas characters right. is permanent. Well, what I love about what what, what I love about Cube, <laughs> what I, what I love about Cube is when he's when he is the forefront of the film in charge of just the financing and picking the actors and shit. He stays really authentic to whatever the experience is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like Boys in the Hood, he had real niggas in that movie. Friday, um, Friday yes. the Long shit he did with show. Mike Epsey, I feel like he always he's one dude that'll take a chance on authenticity. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. shout out to Q for always being at the forefront uh, of really uh, dope and shit. If you think about all the stars that was in that film, right? Stars that was in Friday, that was the first time you saw him. But back to that point, I think we only have tears of joy right like all my sadness is anger right it's like right. i feel like you're trying to do something wrong like glory i got mad um a time to kill i got mad <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah i just want to do something to some white people at that point man and willow know, willow be making me mad the motherfucker you see <laughs> willow <laughs> with the little, with the little they, why don't they got knee braces on this nigga man? <laughs> 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 nigga be, <laughs> You gotta go what? Uh, Dave Chappelle took a break. <laughs> <laughs> I that. Did, did you like? Hold up, is Space Jam two better than the first Space Jam? Yes. We knew what you meant. Yes. What is it about LeBron that does that to y'all? How is this even possible? Like Magic Johnson is my favorite. Like Magic Johnson is. But I'm saying Magic is so great of an athlete, right? Like, Magic is better than every athlete to ever do any sports. My nigga beat HIV, man. Like, right. some niggas yeah. is just legends. But, like, the way y'all feel about LeBron is like the way people feel about Jesus. And it's so weird. You know, it's it's weird as well. I think it's opposite. Because I think that y'all think that LeBron is trying to replace Kobe. So, a lot of LA people. No, no, no I'm, saying, I'm saying so. A lot, of, a lot of people have this resentment for LeBron that, that no, shouldn't no, even not, be not, present. Not, not the, I'm saying not. See, that's like gang talk. Like, not the hate. Why do you love him so much? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll tell you why. Because if I was to build a, a, a basketball player, I would build <laughs> LeBron. If I had a son, I would want my son to be like LeBron. Like he doesn't get in he doesn't get in trouble off the court. 
He he got. You don't all want your fucking... son to be like you? I'm talking about ba- basketball wise. No, I did not start. I did not start. I came off the bench. No, don't don't be me. Don't be like basketball. Basketball wise, he got the perfect oh. name for niggas like this. What do you call them? Bronze sexual. <laughs> It's like hey, Jesus. Jesus. Man, it's no, it's not wild. though. No, it's it's it just that I love Jesus. The, hey, it's hey. just that I love the sport of basketball. He right. plays it the right way. He ain't getting in trouble off the court so and shit like he's that. A, he's, a good guy. he's a good guy. Yeah. Like, and for y'all that's tuning in, Glass is not picking on him by saying he into this monster jam shit. The nigga got a monster <laughs> jam draws. <laughs> 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 that's, that's, that's deep rooted with yeah. the roots on it. I, I hope this nigga Blaze lose yeah. that ladder match tomorrow night. I just, this shit is, <laughs> this nigga gonna play. No, I'm asking. I'm, I'm asking. I'm asking because it's like, even position wise, he's the least successful person in that starting five. Like Magic Johnson won five championships. Michael Jordan won six. Tim Duncan won five. Russell won. 11. Kobe five. Magic Think Johnson about every other living. position. Like you, like I would start that's it with a small forward yeah. when that's the least successful that's position to lead a team from in the court. Historically, the best small forwards are the least winning of all positions. LeBron took. LeBron took four other guys to the finals. Are on you, the on the on the Cavaliers, Booby Gibson and them, uh, they was but, not. But did he survive A's? <laughs> right. Exactly. Come on, man. Come on, man. But but I'm saying but I'm saying even in that case, right? Who did he play to get there? Shout out to Magic. Right. He came out the East. He came but but who did he, who did he beat? Who did who did Jordan dunk on? Like when everybody talk about how great Jordan. Answer the was, fucking question, goddammit. <laughs> that's the problem. See, look, that's, look, no, no, that's the problem with these bronze sexuals. You ask them a question and they answer you with a question. Well, but here's the thing, a lot of people. I don't think people feel like nah. that over. Don't nobody want their kid to be Jordan. No. Don't know how yeah, yeah. Niggas don't want their kid to be ball headed. My son walk in the house with a cross earring <laughs> hanging out of his ear. I'm slapping the shit out of him. I'm so I'm just saying, you talking about a big ass zoot suit. I'm just saying, because you talking about a mustache. No, I'm, I'm asking because it's, it's weird. Like, out of all the fan bases, like, his has to be the most toxic. Where it's like weird, where it's almost like, like he in year 19, he's like, he the best player in the league. And I'm right. like, that's not true. Damn, this man is like, year 19, have you, like, the best players that ever played basketball, Kareem, every best player wasn't the best 19. And y'all still like, yeah, he's still, I'm like, bro, you just watch him struggle in the first round against a team with no MVPs. But let me tell you why, Glasses, it goes back, it goes back to what we did earlier. It goes back to marketing. He's uh, the, he, from he's the, the king. He from controls high school. his net. But when I tell you, he is the greatest person I ever seen control his narrative. And this is something I tell Deuce. As a gangster rapper or as a real motherfucker, the worst thing you can try to do is control your narrative. The only people who try to control their narrative is Satan. Right. And right. you know what's you know, crazy part about you, crazy part about you saying control the narrative? Wait, hold on, hold on. Say that one more time. The only say it again. The the greatest controller of narratives is Satan. Okay. You <laughs> like go back, what was LeBron James' first commercial with Nike? They were in the church with a choir singing the King James, and he came came down the middle of the court passing out basketballs to people in the choir. They told you on his first commercial, well, we about to make this. We about to turn this shit into a religion. And, that, and, and the shit worked. And But that's why I, I don't think a lot of people understand DeWine's mind. When he says Brian's sexual and he talks about LeBron, he's just refer, he's, he's, say, he's referring to the marketing of the player. Yes. He's saying, yeah, LeBron is... Brian is an awesome fucking guy. Dope. Best three that ever like, played like game. Brian. Yeah, he's yeah. a good dude. But, but the way they feel about him oh, man. is like... Un, I, like I don't know if I have enough time. I was watching this show on Netflix called How to Be a Tyrant. And that's what he does. Like, all his moves, like, his business is ran like a tyrant. Yeah. Like, they fighting to control the narrative. He wants to look like a man of the people. They do everything, like, that's like a tyrant. Right, right. And it, it's like if you, they got people in the media, and it's like, it's crazy to watch. Like, I'm just saying, my favorite basketball player is Magic Johnson. I was even a kid. So I definitely probably had more of a connection to this person as a figure. But you were an adult. And you talking about LeBron like that. Like, I would want my kid to be like LeBron. I'm like, okay, when did you start to feel that way about LeBron? I'm glad you asked that. So I was a long-time Heat fan, Miami Heat. So I feel like LeBron came to. I was a long time. And 
I mean, ninety one. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Were you fucking with Ronnie Sykes? Look at I wasn't. I wasn't. I was in by the tenth, tenth, eleventh grade and shit like that, where I get to pick my own team and argue. Three Rollins. Argue, argue with my own nigga. PJ Brown, yeah, when he swung Charlie Ward up in there, yeah, I was fucking with him. Make your point. So what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, so the the heat. Yeah. The heat. The heat used to be. The heat used to be whooping up on LeBron, Dwayne Wade. You know what I'm saying? My favorite player is Tim Hardaway. And you know what I'm saying? So the Heat been whooping up on LeBron. So I didn't they think were. LeBron was all. Yeah, they was. They was putting LeBron out the playoffs. They didn't mean no, make the playoffs what? before LeBron what? got there. They, never played no. they didn't play the playoffs. Talking about when Shaq all. was there. So you, got, you can't make that. Dwayne Wade. Okay. Dwayne Wade, but, the Dwayne Wade was giving LeBron work. And never the playoffs. They never played in the playoffs. Somebody's going to have to look that up. I, I, sure. I can tell you. Okay. Team all right, for sure. But um, so I didn't think LeBron was all that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, Dwayne, ba Dwayne Wade is better than LeBron. So we talking about 08. Yeah, I'm okay. thinking. I'm like Le LeBron is. You know what I'm saying? LeBron, is, he's not that great. Dwayne Wade's better than better than him. Right. Then he came to my team, yeah. and then I got to see all of the shit up close. Like, oh shit, okay, this is Paul's <laughs> seeing LeBron play basketball. See, yeah. things all got turned into something. It's the the emotion. I, yeah, I got yeah, to see it up exactly. close. Yeah. You can't emotion. be emotional. NBA action is fantastic. That's hey, the thing. Like, too, is, hey. too excited hey. right yeah. now. I love <laughs> basketball, <laughs> but with them glasses, the nigga see everything up close. <laughs> And this is so. Think about it. Like this, I have not felt this way about a basketball player as so an adult. What about Kobe? Right. I'm a I'm a Magic Johnson fan. Okay, so what about Kobe? I'm, Kobe, I'm, I'm a, look, Kobe and Magic. Look, look, I was I, I'm a Kobe fan. I was there when he won his uh, fifth championship for course side, but. The nigga's a dope ass hooper. How many seats did you take up? Oh, I had charges. I had two. I had two. I had two. I had two. paid 12000 And I got there for free. But like, but like, but like, going back to what you said about marketing. I swear to God, his I was in Cleveland. LeBron's marketing and branding. Like, when the fuck do a black person ever care if somebody don't get in trouble? Right. Like, I've right. heard multiple LeBron fans be like, well, he don't never get in trouble. Right. Who the fuck cares? I'll tell you when. I'll tell you when. 99% of players don't get when, in trouble. When you, if, if you were an Atlanta Hawks fan, I mean, Atlanta Atlanta Falcons fan, and Michael Vick went down, like, if you have a if you have a favorite player or you have a team that you like and the motherfucker's not available for some off-the-court reasons, that shit's fucked up. So you... The best availability is availability. Like 99.9% okay, so Ty, Ty, hold on, hold on, hold on. 99.9% right players don't get in trouble. So, like, it's, it's just because ESPN keep playing that yeah, one Pac-Man like, Jones that's thing. That's not normal. That's not normal for players to get Red in trouble. Hardy slamming, but, slamming yeah. boots on okay, top the, of M16s. Okay, fucking, divide that by the number of players in the NFL yeah, and then, then come players. up with your probabilities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. like, you know, what, what I was going to say something what he was saying earlier about marketing. I remember I was in Cleveland. I went out. To, I was a uh, with a player on the Cavs the year after LeBron left. So I got to see a lot of the co uh, what the coaches were like. People who were left over staff, top people, and all that stuff. What they would say about LeBron, and it was far different than the marketing. And you really get to see. We and I'm not gonna say anything. I'm not because I'm not. Sure, I'm not no, gonna I'm say that way. shit. But at the same time, just know that when you're up close to the environment, it's far different than what's reported on TV. The, the, and, and just understand that you're getting sold a bill of goods, and it's on you if you believe it or not. Brand well, versus marketing. There we go. But let's talk about something. Um, two things in conjunction that we spoke of: marketing, and then having the money to market correctly. I think the difference between LeBron, as opposed to any other player, is I feel like the NBA was invested in his image immediately a lot of other players had to play their way into being the face of the league but i like felt like right, right right i felt like lebron was kind of giving the keys 13 years old yeah. Yeah. you know what i'm saying and that hasn't been done since kareem but kareem really spoke up for us and the league didn't really have his back on a lot of stuff because successful right in the market right right right, right. so so when the, so when the, when the system is for you then you get a lebron jack look at this LeBron literally had Adrian Wojnarowski as his personal rival. How did you say his name? Adrian Wojnarowski, whatever the fuck his name is. Woj, yeah, whatever the fuck. And they ordered some Polish food right now. And now he has like Ramona Shelbourne. Put sour crowd on the motherfucker. When he goes to teams, he literally has his own writer. Right. And then look at what happened. That that tape that was released a couple weeks ago, Rachel Nichols, talking about the uh, the black girl. Right, uh, right, Asia. Do you know who he who she was talking to? No. She was talking to Le 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 LeBron James' head of PR. So why is your head of PR uh, having this one-on-one -on -one meeting with the people at ESPN controlling narrative? And at the same time, this is and this is the dude that said on tape, he was like, man, this Black Lives Matter stuff is too much. And he's doing all this shit. So everyone around him got access, 
And so to, to you bronsexual sissy boys out there, we believe, look, LeBron James is one of the greatest players to ever play. Definitely. The motherfucker's dope. But that whole narrative y'all got sold on, you the fool that took the bait. And just because somebody doesn't take the bait don't mean they hating. It just means a nigga got a different opinion. Who, who can hate LeBron James? You can. Yeah, He's you perfect. Can. But I, I personally feel like. His fans <laughs> make him not yeah. like him. I feel like, he, I feel like he may be a subsidiary corp of the NBA. <laughs> I feel like it goes it that deep with LeBron uh, where like they have a vested interest and maybe some type of uh, minority owner in his brand because they've I've never seen the NBA have a vested interest for such a long period of time except for Michael Jordan's. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's worth something. It's business. Go ahead. So so LeBron's story, right? In basketball, just in the NBA, he he was a hometown kid from Cleveland. He goes and plays for that for that town. Oh, yeah, but Ohio. He's an Ohio nigga playing for the. And if, okay, so he's he's in Ohio. That's the only Ohio professional team they got. So he plays for that team. He doesn't know how to win a championship. He goes down to Miami, learns how to win a championship, comes back to that team that never had championship, got them a championship, right. and then goes and brings a championship to the L.A. team that was struggling Thank right. without him. Davis. So. Thank you, Anthony Davis. Because hey, when LeBron Davis came, he had the same record. Yeah, but, when LeBron yeah. came, he had the same record. Well, we're talking about narratives, bro. You yeah, just, it's, it's the I mean, it's a great narrative, but there's a reason. What's, why. Better, what's better, the narrative? But that's my point. Like, you're making a good point. It's not nobody dislikes him. People dislike his marketing, his branding. Because, you know, I, I tell, I'll, give you, I'll give you a clear answer. I'll give you why. Because people like me, I don't watch basketball for narrative. I got a dope family at home for that. I watch basketball for the entertainment of 10 people on the court, 90 feet by 45, and the chess, that, that the chess match. The chess match that is that basketball. I like the competition. That nigga, and yeah. it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a game. It's something to have fun with and watch. But outside of that game, after that game is off, I don't watch Sports Center. I don't watch none of these talk shows. It's back to life. Hey, but Fuck all that extra shit. But, but wait but, a minute. Todd's headband is an air freshener. I can smell it from up here. I promise you it's not. I'm about to wrap this up in a second. <laughs> but I get that you love LeBron. He, he LeBron. This is strange. Yeah, it's, it's no. It's I'm just a fan. I'm just a fan of the game. And he, Tom and he Brady, that he has a similar. People love that nigga in a in a similar way. And well. I'm a huge Cam Newton fan. I think Cam Newton's right. a motherfucker. So right, I've sure. never heard nobody talk about like an athlete like so many people. Right, right, right. So many people talk about one athlete this way. It's it's weird. Like, and it's not him, or it's like he like yeah he just goes here and he wins, or he went here. It's like. Bro, he like literally reorganized these franchises completely yeah. to bring in like the best NBA people. talent right. to change this. And like, I'm not mad at it, but it's like to them, it's like simplified into this way of. It's just him. It's so, just him. And then when it's, that. but that's how you say yeah. you like he went to Miami to learn how to win. It's like then he came back and brought a, a, a championship home to Cleveland. And he came to Lakers and brought a championship. Well, that's inaccurate. It's like if I said I just flew here. And like I like I levitated up in the air. It's just it, it's weird. Right, it's right, weird. Right, right, right. And I mean, it's not about Bron. Like again, it's like that is the power of marketing and branding. Is my point. You can ignore right. two other it's, Hall of Famers. It's, that's, it's, how, it's that's how. That's how. You, you have to ignore, literally ignore. You have two to other ignore six. You would have to ignore the contributions of Dwayne Wade, Bosh, Bosh, Love, right, Love, Kyrie. Ray Allen. Ray Allen for sure. Yeah. A Anthony Davis. Kyrie, yeah. Rondo. Yeah. Dwight Howard. <laughs> Shaq did play one year. Hey, 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 but, but, but hold on. Todd Why let him miss that free throw? My nigga Seely from the color purple is shooting today. <laughs> call him Seely. <laughs> Man, Jumping Jack uh, Flash in this month. But to Ty, but to but Ty, Ty had a, a pretty No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, I'm, I'm just saying Ty had a good, you know, uh, alternate perspective, and that's cool. So, you know, kick yeah. that shit, man. Cool. True fan. Yeah, I'm just, a, I'm just a fan of the sport, and I just think that, you know, Niggas just get so mad. That's that's what the way y'all look at LeBron fans is how I be looking at people who just be like, no, nah, but 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 he had all these other motherfuckers he on the team. But then when but then when not mad, but whatever. But <laughs> when you when you talk about other people, Jordan and everything, no one named nobody else on his team. But so he you, did it. But the part when he says you want your son to be like him, that part I'm talking about that. basketball. That's really important. That's really important. That's really important. That's really important. He's like, Andy, don't get in trouble. Say that. I want my son. That hurt. That hurt. That hurt my son. Like, damn. I have a daughter, so. But still, if you but you would have a son, you would want him. 
to be like LeBron rather than LeBron. To play, to play like LeBron. You meant play like okay. You said be like. I was like wow, that's easy. You said off the court. You said off the court. Off the court. Don't be out there slapping nobody. Don't be out there on no damn drugs. No, no, don't, don't fuck. No, be like me off the court. Fuck LeBron. Be like me off the court, nigga. The fuck, nigga. Right, right. Yeah, Todd. Todd didn't mean. You know what I'm saying. You know, be a part of his sperm. You know what I'm saying. Todd meant what. The headband of CBD ain't it. That's a medicated hairline bring back headband. That's a hairline growth. That's a hairline growth generator. You gotta really. And they try to spark a hairline back. Really? You got a hairline sparker. You got him. Really, you gotta really go really deep into the. You gotta go really deep into the Doctor Strange comments to see a motherfucker that look like Blaze in this motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. Todd Toothpaste got Japanese all over. <laughs> Craig hair look like grass in the projects. <laughs> Your hair, it don't, it don't look like nothing. And you, and all you all ain't got it tapered, so I mean, <laughs> you believe in it. <laughs> <laughs> You don't shut your meat mouth ass up, nigga. Nigga, you got to do a raw double cheeseburger <laughs> smile, nigga. Like, Why did your breath hey, smell like hey, a... Hey, your breath smell like a casino seat. Your mouth need to be well, on a rally burger grill. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, this nigga's uh, asking if that's gay. LeBron jersey with no panties is... If you don't have one with panties, it's 100%. You don't have one. He asked if that's gay. Yes. You're not wearing panties. No. It would be gay if you had on panties. Right. Shout out to my so, nigga. So, Ty, you walk, you, you yeah, walk yeah, around, yeah, man. Ty yeah. walk around in a LeBron yeah. jersey with his pussy out. Yeah. 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 You got a LeBron jersey dress. Like Maya? Like Maya in the Jay-Z video? Yeah. Yeah. LeBron, LeBron, LeBron got so much money, he bought a DJ show pet. A DJ oh. show pet. <laughs> See, like, sometimes... Hey, showing his girl about to have some, uh, some, some werewolf puppies. <laughs> hey, you take the bike, you take the seats off all your bikes and pop willies. That nigga crazy. Show me. 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 Show that nigga knows it like the Will of Fortune stopper, nigga. Yeah, he nah, I respect, I respect it though. Y'all better get off my guy Todd, man. Yeah, that hemp bandana you got. Yeah. On. And and uh, Blaze's glasses from the future. Yeah. That nigga Todd smoke weed out of sushi wraps, nigga. You know, set so goofy ass. You know, set so. I've been working all day in the rice patty face ass up, nigga. Are you into like Asian culture? <laughs> no, 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 I'm trying to get this to like they ask you like you you really wearing glasses right now. So yeah, no, no, like as I'm cause I'm trying to get to jokes, like why is he look like an old Asian man? man. He looked like an old yeah. Japanese yeah. nigga. Hey. Yeah. Like his shirt. I, I'm, I'm not knowing this. We don't know either. Like his <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't we don't get we don't it. Know. We don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out like cause you try to catch up on the joke, but the joke seems like they all going. Yeah, that was, I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm not going nowhere. Yeah. Like, is he like Asian or something? Nigga Todd ate up everything in his fish tank. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold up now. I said that about show. Hold up. I said that about show. We not go. We no. not. No, you ain't finna precious me. No, oh, precious me. I said that. Okay. 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 On the show, on the show where Kevin McCall was here, okay. the first show, and okay. Kevin McCall had on the had on the had on the uh, suit. Yeah, I said that. Yeah, yeah. Well, you delivered it horribly. Yeah, no, no, no. Everybody laughed. Everybody laughed. It was very good. It was very good. It was very good. It was very good. Yeah, it was very good. He said eating fish out of the fish tank. Yeah, I don't remember. Damn. But don't make me start doing that shit. Let me just okay. You said, well, I do that. Oh, okay. I'm about to say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, nigga. <laughs> yeah. Old, nigga. Craig, Craig's shirt looked like an old football jersey that Bill Cosby used to wear with the leather helmets. That was long. It do, though. It do, though. It'd be like, it'd be like it four do. more words that you need to delete from the joke. It'd be, it'd be, it would land, no, bro. That nigga yeah. sleeves I could have said this shit in Swahili. That nigga sleeves on. 
Good job. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they super funny. Go ahead. That nigga sleeves look like an old school Pepsi can. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> This nigga eat the. This nigga keep the bones after he eat neck bones. <laughs> I don't know why. Then go ahead, say so good. I fucked around and seen a gardener get fired for leaving some grass like Craig's hair. That was all right. It was all right. That was did. funny. It, it got no, potential. That was funny. Coming off the bench. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. This nigga, <laughs> it, it's pretty little chill. We're going to wrap up the show, man. Uh, so go ahead and tell us how you beat breast cancer. Hey, tell them how you beat your barber in the coma after he lined you up. Okay. Don't tell him. All right, look, check it out. You already know what it is. Follow me on Instagram, The Real DJ Show. You know what I mean? And I also got my shirt, too. You know what I mean? For the back bath from radio where you drop the shit, we play the hits. Talk about it. Oh, yeah, I must feel. Oh, yeah. Selling these shits for $49.95. You know what I'm saying? You, like, you know what the shirt say? Oh, of course. Hell no. <laughs> All kind of shit. DJ Show DJ Hour. That's what it say. That's what it say. <laughs> <laughs> they looped it back around. <laughs> Your sleeves is made out of <laughs> <laughs> He said nougat? That's funny. That's funny. That's funny. That's funny. That's real funny. That's good shit. Oh, man. That nigga said Can't nougat. <laughs> I'm glad you're back, man. Don't ever leave that long again, nigga. <laughs> appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? We love, we love you up in here, for love real. Too, love you too. Man, tell them where they can find you, man, Blaze. Oh, man. Bad boy Blaze. Shout out to myself. Uh, double O B L Z. Instagram. I'm backwards. Man, you know, Big Deuce, 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 Follow us at LA Giants with a Z. Straight up. The low. Googleable. Just Google me. Follow me anywhere. Well, that's just Malone, man. Give it up for Glad. Yes, sir. Yeah. Todd, tell them where they can find Yeah, you. check me out at Uncle Todd Comedy on Instagram, um, Twitter. Check my album out. It's called I'm Out There. It's got. Um, Blame the bartender on there. Taco Tuesday. Check out the um, Uncle Ty versus the Las Vegas Hookers story. It's on there. Uh, shout out to my boy Jeff. His birthday just passed. You know what I'm saying? Nigga look like an earthworm. I'm out. Who look like an earthworm? My nigga Jeff. Uh -huh. <laughs> he, said, he said, tell them where they can find you at, man. Seven you, yeah, you can find Blaze coming off the top rope if you get caught slipping in a match, nigga. Catch that nigga. Catch that nigga. That's your leg. Catch Todd at Yosinoya <laughs> arguing with the manager. <laughs> catch, catch Craig getting into it with his barber. <laughs> Go ahead, man. Oh, Lord knows. If you already need oh, that, Nick. It, uh, <laughs> shut up. It's Autobots, man. Find me on Instagram. It's, it's Autobots. Find me on YouTube, Autobots. And check me on TV. You see me. I love you. Good life. Man, go on, Doze. Tell him. Chet, 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 Chet Hey! There we go. Regular underscore DLZ. We got the brunch going on uh, the Sunday. Y'all pull up, man. Go brunch in this bitch, man. Bitch. I love everybody. That's right. Uh, yeah, Dewan B on Instagram. Y'all know that shit. I got my webinar coming up uh, Sunday explaining racism to children, how to break this shit down for them so they know what's going on. Your kids are being traumatized by this shit anyway, so you may as well tell them what the real deal is. So that's what our webinar is about. And then, uh, yeah, I got my live drum sample packs, Incense and Ashtrays, the music show, getting ready to get back going. All that good, dope shit. Oh, yeah, check out my interview I did, I did a couple of days ago with uh, uh, SELC president and former Dr. King limo driver, uh, Ray Fontroy. Mm -hmm. He breaks down. He going, he going at, in, a, in an interview. He's talking about how, you know, Martin, Martin Luther King fired Jesse Jackson, you know what I mean, before, I shit, you know, before all the Wompty Wamps and all that stuff happened. It's a lot of... Details that they don't tell y'all mainstream history yeah. that I got in that interview. So Go check it out. That. Hell yeah. Man, appreciate everybody coming through the show. Uh, I'm going to have uh, is anything you two niggas want to say. You, you, can catch, you can catch the wine at 7-Eleven putting relish in a Slurpee. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga been sucking his thumb since he was 20. Yeah. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I don't know. Yeah, that, yeah. Go ahead. I'm 
Oh, you scared? You scared yeah, of Todd? Todd, he's scared of you. That nigga That's scared cool, of you. But look, I was for the he said, back. I know who I am. <laughs> 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 I'm what right. you mean, nigga? What I'm you mean? Saying. I'm the greatest to ever do this shit. Remember that, nigga. <laughs> The greatest, <laughs> nigga. Like golf grass. What's your hair look like? <laughs> it don't look like nothing. <laughs> I love you, man. Todd, is anything you want to say about yourself? He's scared of you, nigga. So <laughs> I'm, I'm glad they let you out the zoo. You know, yeah. said you got to check back in. I don't know. I'm, I was already done. Shout out to your dentist, and you got three front teeth. Oh. Man. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to your gums, physical therapist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm comedy's last dragon in this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> hey, nigga, that bandana, <laughs> that bandana is throwing off your pH balance. Now. <laughs> <laughs> pH balance. Uh, Spell pH balance, yeah. nigga. <laughs> Comedy's last dragon. Show mouth look like the inside of surgery. <laughs> All right, man, we we gonna wrap up the show. Check out thecraigsmith.com, man. I'm I'm in Baltimore, August eighth at the the Baltimore Comedy Factory, man. Make sure y'all come fuck with me, Baltimore. You know what I'm saying? Let's sell that show out. Um, <laughs> check out the website. <laughs> also, uh, download that Chill Withers album. It's doing really well. Um, download it. Tell a friend about it, man. Purchase it off the website. Check out the new merch. Um, and uh, I appreciate the support. <laughs> you in there, huh? You in there, about to the- Yeah, they hilarious. Uh, yeah. If I owe you something, you can get it from God, nigga. That's been the show. <laughs> Great show, fella. Great show, fella. Oh, God.